evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Clearview Ice Arena. We're back here in Moon Township, Pennsylvania for your RMU Colonials home opener with a caster camera for the first time here down at the island. Uh, introducing ourselves real quick, I'll be on play-by-play -play tonight. Uh, head coach of Robert Morris University Esports, CJ Buckeye, sitting beside me is reigning RMU Club Sports Broadcaster of the Year, Caden McCrory. Caden, RMU had a shaky start to the season, playing Canisius last weekend, split it 1-1. What do you think tonight's going to hold for this team? Well, first off, it's great to be back, CJ. It's great to be alongside you, and thanks for a little little bit of hype up there with the broadcast of didn't the year. didn't tell you I was going to do that, did I? Yeah, you did. It was a little <laughs> bit of a surprise to me, but... Hey, the first two games for RMU, one went well, one on the other end not so well. But Justin Adamski, the leader, the captain of this team, senior, three goals, one assist between his two games, and most importantly, one point away from 100 career points. What an amazing accomplishment for Justin. Honestly, and only in a handful of games. He's only played about 72, 73 yeah. games, so he's well over a point a game, sitting at about 1.37 on Elite Prospects right now. Um, minor correction, he had two assists. They, elite, elite prospects forgot one of them. I believe so. So it shows 98 on their page, but 99 total points for him. And they do have a new player coming in from Mexico City, Mexico. Yeah, Alejandro Apu de la Fuente. A forward, he's going to be wearing number 21 tonight, and this is his debut with the RMU Colonials. This kid's been traveling around, started with Mexico City. He actually played overseas with the Mexico national team, worked his way through the United States and Canada, and now he's found himself here on the Robert Morris University Colonials roster. And I think this is going to be a huge addition for them, CJ. Oh, for sure. I mean, he's he's decently built, you know, six foot 205. That puts him near the middle of the squad on the upper end of that. But you mentioned he has time on the Mexican national team. He's sitting with 11 games played, four points in those 11 games. But, I mean, come on, that's the national stage. Exactly. I think we'd all be a little bit behind on our goal totals for that one. But... I mean, a wild, a wild get for these Colonials. Alejandro Apud de la Fuente. Um, we're going to go by Apud tonight. That's what he has on his elite prospects. So uh, his his parents, I think, were here. His dad had the Mexican flag behind the behind the glass down there where Rutherford will be in net tonight. So he'll be back there. I don't know if we're going to see the flag come out. We might. We'll I have to so. highlight it for <laughs> sure. I mean, it's massive. It's a massive flag. I don't think anyone's going to be disappointed if the flag comes up and distracts your view for a little bit of time. I mean, that, that's pretty cool. All the way from Mexico City Mexico to City, Moon Mexico. Township, PA. I mean, that, that's incredible. As the team's getting ready to come out tonight, I do believe we're going to have the John Tucci as well. Yes, we are. The national anthem. So that's going to be very cool. Glad that he can get down here. But the arena call is happening. The Colonials have entered the ice for the first time for a game down here at the Clearview Ice Arena. Game should be starting here shortly. We're sitting at 8.30, so um, probably going to be a little later start. Puck drop, I'm assuming, will be about 8.40. But this Rutgers side hasn't played a game quite yet. We don't know where they are. They do have an absolute mammoth on their team. He was sitting about 6.3 on the paper. No shot. He's 6.5 on skates. There's no doubt about it. He just looks like a, a specimen of this team. Number 37, uh, Josh Solovey. He's a junior forward out of Brooklyn, New York. Oh, and Brooklyn. Of course, he's a Brooklyn boy, right? But I, I'm going to tell you, I think he's going to be one of the guys to watch. I mean, with his size, if he moves around well, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. He's going to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of the, the larger players on this RMU team. Nicholas, he's 6'2". Finnegan, he's 6'2". Albert is 6'2". But they look small compared to the 6'5 guy. He's they massive. Do. A bunch of freshmen, might I add, as well, joining this team. Last year, they only had about one or two guys come and play big time rules. Now they got five or six. A this lot. freshman class is absolutely incredible for this Colonial squad. Plus, the transfers are coming in of Ben Webster and Alejandro Apu. Yeah, and that's adding more freshmen to it. Exactly. I mean, looking at their roster, it looks like seven or eight total. But we're going to take it over to the arena announcers for the starting lineups. On defense, number 20, Scott Schnell. Scott Schnell starting for Rutgers. On defense, number 77, Rich Kolazuski. Kalazuski as well on defense on for the Rutgers side. 19, Michael, Scaretta. Michael Scaretta, the junior Mark forward Rankin, from Chatham. 12, Alex, Sech. Alex Sech, freshman from Old Bridge. One to Max watch Center, there. Number nine, Alex Levenberg. Max Levenberg, the junior forward from goal, Philly. 31, Jake and Jake Kakados in net for them as well, a senior Nine, out of Randall. By Joe 
Over to the RMU side now. Blake Loge is out there with, I'm assuming, going to be Draper here in a second. Oh. No. They're going with Hunter Hodgson, the freshman from Monongahela. Freshman playing big roles. Local boy Roman Kramer out there. Unfortunately, Mickey is hurt tonight. He won't be able to play this weekend. So there's going to be a little bit of sub. And it's Gio Palumbo out it's, with the first line tonight. It's not much of a sub. They played together all last year. The chemistry's true. still there. Very true, very true. The man of the hour, Justin Adamski. 99 points. Let's see if he can get his 100th in net. Parker Rutherford. Rutherford looking really strong. A 957 against Canisius last weekend. Stopping 47, 49, 49 shots against, 47 saves. Turning it over to Tucci now. Ladies and gentlemen, Man of the hours. please rise if you're able and remove your hats. Direct your attention to the flags beside the scoreboard for the singing of our national anthem by Army's own, Mr. John Tucci. Packed house tonight. Thank you. Some excitement you feel to have this opening day night with your family and friends. Who do you got there? <laughs> Will you take time off and thank the sports Alejandro? Ladies and gentlemen, John Tucci. That was a longer one. He's pretty excited. Oh, he's ready for hockey season to be back. He's always ready to get down here at the island. I'll tell you what, I am too. I'm oh, excited man. for this game tonight. Home opener, the energy, the crowd buzzing already. This is a packed house. Either. Very much so. We don't have the band over there, and people are making their way over there, it looks. But I'll tell you what, this is the, this is the side to be on. Oh, yeah. This is where all the big hits happen along this glass. Well, with uh, George Macriocostas in the senior defender, we know he played D3 hockey before my time here at RMU, but what I've been told is he is a heavy hitter. Yeah, I do think he actually played with Norman, one yes, of our other broadcasters as well, and 
if I know Norman, he probably got hurt and <laughs> George came to his defense. So That's the kind of teammate you want, though, right? I mean, a guy that's going to stick up for you and not afraid to use his body. Yeah, I will say that we're going to have to watch this defense. They did lose a key puck-moving defenseman in Braden Harbison. That is a tough hole to fill, forcing Draper to go back. And we're going to have to see how this team is able to work because they have a lot of stay-at-home defensemen. They've got a lot of heavy hitters. But their offense should shine against this Rutgers team. As they win the faceoff, carry it into the zone. RMU's trying to corral possession with a shot from the point. And that is number 13, the freshman, Hunter Hodgson, with a cannon from the point. One thing I noticed there, CJ, is you saw 16 Palumbo. As soon as Hodgson wound up for that shot, you saw where Palumbo was right in front of the net. Yep. That was Loges. I think I would have stepped aside. Oh, yeah. Cannon of a shot. Yeah. He's got all the power. Little Has some trouble with accuracy sometimes. Rutgers carrying it out. Goes all the way down, no touch. Icing waved off. Hodgson, what a nice move. He looks Sends really comfortable. Around. He does, and I think they're going to need him to play comfortable because he looks like a puck-moving defenseman. And Damski with the shot almost gets one there. A nice save by the Tendi up and out of the glass. And Damski looking for that 100th point early. Kramer said, Justin, I know you're one away. I'm going to feed you. Wide open along the left side, carried it in just a little bit over. Hit the goaltender's shoulder and out of play. Trying to get that monkey off his back early, but I'll tell you what, I don't think we're going to have to wait long to see his 100th oh, no. point. If it's not this game, it'll be tomorrow. Face off one by Rutgers. RMU trying to gain control of the puck, and they do. Sent in was Finnegan on net, paddled aside by the goaltender. Back behind the net, number 10, Kyle McGinnis for Rutgers, loses possession of the puck, and it's chipped back in by Cam Smith. Rutgers gets it behind their net. Looking to get some form of offensive attack. A minute gone in this game, and they haven't touched the blue line. Oh. And they get it now, sent all the way in. Battled aside by Rutherford. Almost loses that one, but it's picked up, thankfully, by Connor Moran, another freshman. For Moon Township, he didn't have to go far. Yeah, not, there's a couple of Moon kids on this team. Between him, I believe Finnegan, and then uh, one other player I can't think of the moment, Zach Love, another freshman forward. All from Moon. Moran sends that one in. Picked up by Rutgers. Sent back behind the net. Thrown forward, that's gonna be off. RMU's gonna have to touch up and they do. Keith Reed got a little bit of a shove there by number 21, Thomas Hilliard on the Rutgers side, but able to touch up. Rutgers holding, looking for that outlet pass. Missed the puck there, actually 15, James Ryan for the Rutgers side, whiffed on that one right in front of his bench. That could have been bad, but playing a little bit of catch back and forth. This Rutgers team, I was saying it in the warm-ups, their passing wasn't looking too crisp. Uh, maybe they're getting the first game jitters here at the Clearview Arena. Couple games, it usually takes a couple games to get used to everyone on the same page. Especially at game speed. Practices yeah. will help a little bit, but to get into game speed, you really need to play some scrims, you need to play some games, and Rutgers coming in with nothing on the record sheet, and their passes already look a little suspect passing D to D back there. A couple, about a minute ago, along the Clearview sign where the Rutgers bunch is Cam Smith. I don't know if you saw it or not, CJ, but he absolutely finished his check and almost put a kid right over into the boards. I heard it. I did not see it. I heard the yelling. Yeah. Clean hit, but uh, almost put him right over. Very solid check and getting the aggression going early. Alejandro fires it on net. Didn't even have to pass the blue line. Already getting a little scrappy down by the net, but Apud with a beautiful shot high towards the mask, but a good save by the goaltender, Kakatos, for Rutgers. If that's how we're going to see Alejandro Apud play, I think we're going to see quite a few goals in his future. Yeah, he was not he was not playing to get that puck deep or anything like that. No, no, no. He fired it right on net. It was perfect. There's a rebound there. He's smacking that one home. Oh, for sure. And if you also saw the pushing and shoving. He's not afraid to stand up for himself either. No, and he was strong on his blades there. He was not getting knocked over quickly. If that was me, I would have been on my behind rather quickly. Absolutely same here. Oh, what a nice play and a shot that goes high. Again, Adamski looking for that 100th point. That was a beautiful shot. Gets blocked by Kakato's high, and he's been tested a few times already. Rutherford only really has one kind of weaker shot. In all due time, Mr. Adamski, you got still a solid 57 minutes to make it happen. Oh, he wants to get that out of here soon. Yeah. He wants to have the celebration. 100 points in this league, not easy to come by. Only one other player on this RMU roster has it, and that's Mickey. And that's because he's in his graduate year. 
Rutgers trying to chip that one in. Adamski hard against the wall, holds the puck, hits the brakes, spins around with some nice edge work. He's moving forward yet again, taking a page in a Kramer's book, and the pass to Kramer now. He's coming in, looking maybe for a pass, goes around the net, out front, Kakados with a good save. Palumbo goes in there like normal. Rutgers <laughs> tried to throw tried to throw Palumbo and ended up falling himself. That is part of Palumbo's game right there. We saw it back in the Murray Series game that you had the call on for last year. Palumbo took a hit, everyone came after him and he immediately bolted right to the bench. Yep. Palumbo starts it, he heads off. He's got a little bit of Marchand in his game. He does, I can definitely see that. Talent's there too. Oh, for sure. That's the reason he's on the first line, is it not? Yeah. Rutherford stops that, sends it back behind. Oh, RMU turns that puck over, but they're able to regather it. Maybe not. Rutgers with a chance here down behind the net. Cleared aside by Finnegan. RMU's going to pick up this puck and move on out. Robert Byrne sends that one in. Kakados whiffs on that one. Byrne tries to center that one. Trying to get it to Zach Love, but it goes out to the point. Shot goes in. It's loose. What a shot. What a play by the RMU Colonials. The goal goes in. I believe that is – was that – that was, was that Kramer's That was cousin? Greg Kramer. Greg Kramer with the first goal on the Colonials ice with the slap pass from Finnegan at the point, able to hit Kramer's stick behind Kakados in the back of the net, and it's 1-0 RMU. Greg Kramer sitting pretty right in front of the net, stick on puck, and puts it home. A great play, though, by the other freshman, Andrew Finnegan. Perfect shot, perfect deflection, and Greg Kramer, congratulations, first goal on Colonial ice. You said it at the beginning, these freshmen are going to have to play a role, and they just combined two points right there off the bat. Kramer with the goal. Not the one you're used to hearing oh, me say. No. That's Greg Kramer. I'm not, I am not. think that won't be the last time we say a Kramer's name on the score sheet here today. Oh, I don't think so. Rutgers loses possession, and RMU is going to try and capitalize on a little bit of momentum as Cam Smith turns that puck over. Sec turns that one back over again. Rutgers falling a bit. Oh, what a nice play by number 18 on this RMU side. And a save by Kakados. That was Connor Moran, another freshman. Dangles around the defenseman for Rutgers, able to corral the puck and gets it on net. Kakados didn't even look like he had that one. He looked like he was kind of off his edge and diving towards his post. And Moran with a good shot in the open area. The goaltender just lucky to get over there in time. Another cannon from Moran at the high circle. Robert Byrne with the assist. So there was an upperclassman on there. Yep. I mean, he's a sophomore, but not a freshman. No. Nope. Moving forward, RMU is going to corral that puck after another Rutgers turnover. I'd hate to see the advanced stats for this game. It's not good for the Rutgers side. And it's only the first game for them, so. And then there's a game tomorrow, too. We're not even five minutes into this one, either. Oh, no. It's, it's very sloppy for them. I'm sure the uh, coach is not too pleased with that one, but hopefully they can get it together and we can get a clean game. What a nice hit right in front by number 24. That was Austin Cross on this Rutgers side, smashing uh, Macrocostas. Yeah, Macrocostas tried to chip his way into the zone. The Rutgers held their line and put the big hit on, and Rutgers got that puck out of there. He's not a man to anger. Oh, Let's no. just say that. Another fun little factoid is, did you see a familiar face on the bench there, CJ, for RMU? Oh, Christian, who was it? I missed it. Christian Pellegrino. Oh, would you look at that? He's coming home. He's the assistant coach now on this Colonial squad. Well, he heard Mackey was coming back, so he says, well, I mean, I might as well come back yeah. too. Yeah, he's the, he's the quote-unquote goalie coach for them. The goalie coach. Yes. Well, I'm sure he had a nice long conversation with Mackey after last weekend's game. Yeah, I know they're good buddies, and I know they're, they push each other to be better, so I'm sure no hard feelings between the two. Oh, not at all, and Mackey just had a bad game. There's nothing – you, one you game. can't do anything about it. It's Canisius too. Yeah. They're a fantastic hockey team. Oh, a very dangerous play there, but – RMU's defense is able to capitalize and win that puck back, but it's still out in front, and Rutherford with a save. I keep saying Rutherford like that. <laughs> Rutherford with a save, oh, and then that's going to be a penalty right there. A hand pass. I thought it was going to be a, some oh. sort of boarding call, but that's a hand what I pass thought. there. I think it might have been Keith Reed, possibly the guilty party as one of the Rutgers players went awkwardly in the boards, but luckily only a hand pass, now this puck's going to come outside. Yeah, so no penalty there. The hit looked strange. To be honest, I didn't get a yeah. full look at it. I just heard someone go down and then a whistle. I assumed the worst. Ooh. What a nice play by Adamski. Able to thread the needle there a little bit. Draper is going to send that one in. 
Again, Draper playing defense only. Oh, the pass out front, Adamski hits the crossbar! Are you kidding me? Adamski is kicking himself. That puck was on the goal line. Oh, oh my. my, he is absolutely livid with himself. <laughs> A beautiful chance, kisses the crossbar. But it's not over yet, he has another chance. Settles the puck and can't get it good enough for a shot. Adamski sends it back in. Kramer now back to Adamski with the shot and a save by Kakados. It's still in. Palumbo with the shot and another save. Palumbo with another shot. Hits the mask. And, that's and this here. first line is buzzing tonight. Let's Rutgers. talk about that. That play from Roman behind the net to feed Justin again and again. Those two's chemistry is on point. Adamski not thrilled. Hits the bench. Gonna grab a glass of water, and I'm sure that Joseph's gonna be tapping him. Calm down, kid. You got it coming. Back behind the net. Rutgers with it. Able to control that puck. A nice pass between the legs sent in. Rutherford. I said it right this time. Look yeah, at that. <laughs> Paddles We're still to the side. Early. <laughs> First game for us, too, okay? Yes. <laughs> Rutgers sends it in. Back behind the net. Picked up by Albert. Tries to get this one out. Oh, he's able to get it. Actually throws that on net with Zach Love, but Rutherford able to stop that one. Out to the point. Rutgers with a shot that goes bottom, but stopped by a skate. Rutgers going to try and corral that. Flips it back up. Chipped back in. Rutgers trying to corral the puck and get some form of offensive pressure. They really only had one or two chances, but they were a little dangerous. Those counterattacking plays can always catch a player off guard. That is an offsides touch there by Cam Smith. He did get tripped up a little bit by Nate Block of Rutgers, but just an offsides call for now. Puck's gonna come out, face off, right in front of us, honestly. Right, right next to this blue line. Couple, couple Penguins jerseys down there, hitting the glass. Everyone's enjoying the game here tonight so far. RMU up 1-0, 12.45 to go in this first period. Rucker sends that all the way in. That's going to be a no-touch icing. And the faceoff's going to go all the way down to the Rutgers zone. This is another good chance, but the goaltender, Lakatos, he's been on his game so far, except for that little mishap where he almost lost his edge, almost cost him, but he recovered in time. But Lakatos has been seeing a lot of pucks come his way. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that Rutgers goaltender has been pummeled so far, and we're not even halfway through this first period yet. We'll have to see what happens for the rest. This RMU offense is explosive. It has to make up for the newer defense as they learn how to play together with some upperclassmen there, but there are a couple of freshmen. Like I mentioned, losing a, a leader like Harbison is tough, but the defense able to make some plays as that's loose out in front. A late hit in the back by Cam Smith, and that's gonna be called. Rutgers clears it in. That's going to be touched up. Yeah, and he, he knows it. Are we talking about that defensive play, though, by number five, Ben Webster. Rutherford bounced that puck around, but Ben Webster was right there to clear out the loose change and avoid a goal. But now, unfortunately, Cam Smith's going to go sit for two minutes. Yeah, and it was a, it, it was a very not good play. Uh, you definitely don't want to see that if yeah. you're Coach Joseph. He's even looking at Cam Smith going, what, what do you – why? So – it was absolutely a a check in the back, yeah. but it was an interference call. See, it, the puck wasn't nowhere near him. Just gave him a little shove from behind, but it did interfere with the play as he was going down into the slot. So let's see what this Rutgers power play can do. Nice passing play, a good oh, block. Nice. Blake Loges. Blake Loges. There comes Adamski and Kramer, a dangerous PK, just as much as they are even strength. Adamski with the hands, kicks it to himself, dangles through, and he gets it! His 100th point, Justin Adamski on the penalty kill, on the forehand, tucks it behind. Kakados doesn't know what to do. It's two to nothing, RMU. Are you kidding me? Justin Adamski, he took that puck from end to end, made him move around four different guys. Dipsy Doo puts it right in, and Justin Adamski, we talk about milestones. First, it was the first goal for Greg Kramer. Now it's the 100th point for Justin Adamski. These milestones are just keep rolling in. Assisted by Roman, too. But I'll tell you what, Adamski with the patience and the skill to take his time and tuck it behind Kakados. A beautiful play by Adamski. And I'll tell you what, he is absolutely buzzing for that play. 
for that goal. And we're halfway through the first period. I think there's many more to come for him this season. Oh, so many to come. I was talking to him a little bit yesterday on our Club Sports Live podcast. And he told me, I don't take these personal accolades seriously. I, I don't know. That was kind of special, Justin. You have to admit that. That was pretty cool. 100 points. That is quite the milestone. And he gets it here in his senior year. Rutgers with a chance there. Would have been a high stick out in front, but not many chances for this power play. RMU with more chances on their penalty kill, and that is an offsides play, number seven, Jennings for this, or I'm sorry, that is number three, Ben Jennings. Uh, bad play walking that line. If you're gonna be a defenseman and you're gonna hold it at that blue line, you have to be able to maintain that onside pressure. If not, you won't be on that power play unit for long. No. As the, the crowd just erupted for the goal call, Justin Adamski. A special moment here at the uh, Clearview Arena. Justin Adamski, his fourth goal for this season, his 100th career point. Congratulations, son, you've done well. I know your father's here. He introduced himself to us a little bit earlier. Said that he liked the interview. Yeah, he did. I, I hope so. I hope everyone kind of enjoyed it. Rutgers at the point. Puck goes up into the netting and it is stopped. It's a good chance there from the Rutgers power play. The penalty kill unit there for the Colonials. Kept him there, kept him in the box area. That puck goes out of play. 33 seconds to go on this penalty kill, but RMU's defense looks up to the challenge right now. I did see in chat um, that there's actually a misprint on our roster sheet here. It's Lakatos. Lakatos. Yes, so apologies for that. It, it has a K on our roster. Yeah. Um, and if it if it isn't, if that is actually how you spell it and it's said with an L, I do apologize. Rutgers now with the puck. Looking for it. Down low. Looking in the center there. Sec was there, but a nice play by Finnegan to lift the stick. No pass was able to, to get through as Draper was there, but here comes Kramer. Do we have another one? Kramer comes in, he has a Damski goes for the pass, but a nice defensive play by the Rutgers captain, number 20, Scott Schnell, laying down, taking away that passing lane. Kramer now moves forward. Little toe drag, centers it, but no one's there. Adamski rolled away, looking for a change. As we are now 10 minutes into this first period, moving forward, Rutgers. Shot goes high, the penalty is over. RMU had the goal on the penalty kill to make it two to nothing. And the Rutgers power play didn't look all that strong. But again, that might be their, their first power, well, absolutely is their first power play of the season. So gonna have to work on that going forward. But this Rutgers side looking a little slow to start, but it's only the first period. We'll see what happens throughout the rest of the game. RMU throws it up along the glass. The defenseman Ooh. gets crushed as he keeps that puck in. He did his job. Tipped the hat to the defenseman. Something happened there with Moran. He tried to send that up. I think it hit the stanchion and just bounced right back at him. It's an awkward bounce. It's Smith. A good hit by Cam Smith, but you gotta be okay. Watch that ACL, son. <laughs> Fell a little bit awkwardly trying to finish. Oh, oh my a, goodness. Another absolute hit by your boy yet again at the very beginning. Yep. We mentioned him. Macrio Costas. He lined him up oh, from he the paced end of the him. boards. And it's going to be. It's going to be Connor Moran, Moran going to the bench or going to the box there. It's going to be two minutes for a hooking. See the ref stash. I do. Oh, that's pretty. Stylish. That's pretty sweet. Big sty from the referee. Playing in the seventies. <laughs> Wish I could grow facial hair like that. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool. I don't. Defenseman for Rutgers at the point, sliding in. Looking for an opening of the pass. Gets one over to uh, Kakata. Up along the boards and out it goes. I'm sorry, that's Kata, Garrett Kata. The freshman from New Jersey. Behind the net, picked up by Palumbo. Turns it over to Kata. Kata drops it off to his D partner. Waiting for the wheel and here they come. RMU collapses into their 2-1-1 PK. Down behind the net, it's gonna be picked up by the Colonials, fires it along the boards, goes all the way out to the point, and they miss that one. That's gonna go clear out, that's Ben Jennings yet again. 
Just a fortunate bounce right through the stick there for the Colonials. Yeah, it took a hard bounce, but Kramer picks his pocket too. Oh, he almost did it for a second time. Kramer tries to get that one to Adamski. Oh my goodness, Kramer. How about a, how about a third He's time? still going for it, chips it past. He's gonna say, hey Adamski, watch this one, bud. <laughs> tries to go over the pad, but not able to put it home. That was a nice little move, forehand back and tried to go over the glove of Roman Kramer. Looks like he took no summer off. Cotta sends it in, Rutherford with the grab. And we're gonna have a stoppage. I mean, Kramer was essentially in a phone booth yeah. for about 30 seconds. And he came away with the puck, got past the defenseman, and then made a nice move. But Lakatos with a nice save. And that's gonna keep it two to nothing. If you would have saw another shorthanded goal for this RMU side, uh, I think we might see the Rutgers coach lose his lid. I gotta say, this Colonial's penalty kill has been really impressive to start this one off. All the way out, Lakato stops it, waiting for his defenseman, drops it off behind. Schnell, the captain for this Rutgers team. The Scarlet Knights now. Moving forward, Schnell's looking for a pass. He sec to his left, Levenberg to his right. Sends it in behind the net. It's going to be picked up by Sack, who actually loses that one. Thought he was going to pick it up. Draper goes into the wall right next to the Eaton Park logo. Draper's just going to pin him against the wall. Almost takes a stick up high by Levenberg. Draper still on the ground. Loge is going to go back. And Loge just fires it all the way down around. That's going to kill the penalty. RMU's back to even strength. Rutgers goes 0 for 2 on the power play tonight. Not a great start, but this is their first game, like we said, just getting the getting the flow of things together, but the Colonials penalty kill has done an amazing job preventing any chances in front of Rutherford. Loges to Moran, sends it all the way down. Oh, what a hit on Kovac. Takes a little bit of a hip check. Moran picks up the puck, gets tied up against the boards, but Rutgers is going to corral that, sends it all the way down. Big hit on Ben Webster. Rutgers going to have to go all the way back down to their zone again. Reed goes in with the hit, hand is up, and there's going to be a call on the Rutgers side. Wonder what the call, maybe a rough? Scarietta, is that number 19? Yeah, Scarietta. Yep. We're going to have to see the call from the ref. I didn't see it. I didn't either. It must have been away from the play. Maybe it was on the Webster play. Maybe he got his legs up, hook, high stick. No, 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 no. Charging. Charging? I couldn't tell, but I only saw the end of the hand signal. Yeah, I punched his hand out. Ah. I believe that's charging. RMU in the power play regardless. Kramer picks up the puck, drops it off for Adamski, who sends it down underneath. Reed out to Kramer. Kramer walks in back to Reed. Reed out to Fox's den wall, back to Adamski at the point as Geo to his left. Gives it to Reed on the right with the shot up into the netting. We're going to have a whistle. Good movement of the puck by RMU, but nothing into the danger area as Reed put the put the shot high. And you see the defenseman, forward, whatever you want to call him, Tyler Draper, sitting right in front of the net. One of the sweet spots, him and Gio Palombo. It was roughing, not charging. Ruffing. Two minutes for roughing for Scarietta of the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Kramer sends it in. Reed along the Clearview wall, passes the Rutgers bench, fades off a hit, sends it in. Chopped at. Kramer now with the puck off the feed from Palumbo. Sends it down to Reed. Reed out to Adamski, who can't control the puck. That's going to go all the way down to the Rutherford zone, and chasing him is Kata. Adamski, he's going to wheel. Looking for a bit of a play here. Adamski's going to carry it. Is he going to get through? Oh, between the legs. Sends it top shelf. Adamski, that's 101. The defenseman in shambles, head first in the boards. Adamski between the legs, top cheddar. Lakatos, lay on your back, son, because that's three. I'm speechless. Justin, we need to do more interviews before games. Are you kidding me? No way he gets a Hattie in the first period, right? Surely, surely no. He's the GOAT. He's literally the GOAT right now. You can't stop him. No, him and Kramer. Kramer showed, hey, all right, it's not just Adamski, okay? It's I Kramer can do this too. too. But Adamski with speed, wheeling from his own zone, he went coast to coast, top cheddar. If the water bottle was on the left, that would have been popped and on the ice. Sports Center top 10, I think we might need to send that to him. Definitely a hat pick. Oh, yeah. RMU 
able to catch that puck off the turnover. Three to nothing here in the first period. 5.49 to go in the first. Rutgers chips it back, looking for a pass out, sends it up along the boards. Shot in that went high. What a weird play there by Lakatos. The shot came in from Hunter Hodgson, but I'll tell you what, RMU's still wheeling in that offensive zone. I'd love to see the time on ice right now in the attacking zone. The time on attack has to be through the roof for all of these RMU players. It has to be, I mean, except for, I mean, you could even say the four minutes of power play time that Rutgers has had that at least half, if not more, was in the Rutgers zone. It's just incredible how this penalty kill has just been able to just keep going. Ooh, what a cannon. Macro Costas, he's dangerous in all aspects. Kept in by this RMU side, tipped over. Reed almost had one there, but Lakatos was able to see that one. Macrio Costas takes a hit there. Tries to throw one back, loses an edge. Didn't have good balance there, but RMU's gonna carry forward. Reed with speed, past one, sends one in. Five holes saved by Lakatos. Rutgers, that was Schnell who had that, but loses it. The captain. Schnell, loses that one to the RMU team. Right out in front, Keith Reed, four to nothing. Reed carried it into the zone, waited patiently. The pass came out to the high slot. Reed buries that one, and Lakatos has let up four. And there's 4.45 to go here in the first period. I think that was Garrett Walker, 27, another freshman right there to feed the puck to Keith Reed. Make no mistake, puts it home. And the Colonials are buzzing. Yeah, I, wow, four to nothing, four minutes to go here in the first period. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on, but RMU is absolutely buzzing right now. And I will say there are two captains for this Rutgers side. Oh, it, is Austin, it is Austin Cross and Scott Schnell, both defensemen. Back behind the net, Rutgers tries to center this one. Rutherford hasn't been tested much, but there could be an opportunity here. Both captains on the ice looking for some leadership and stability out of the back end from the Scarlet Knights. Sent in, Moran gets that one on net. Paddled aside and stopped by Lakatos. We also kind of mentioned this last year when we were talking about after the first line, who can step up and score goals. And one of the guys we talked about was Keith Reed. He's You're definitely Robert carried that goal. over his from his first year as a freshman where he got put in as a second line center right away. Reed. Carries that over into this year. And make no mistake, he's back to where he was last year. Keith Reed fit into a really interesting position last year. He was able to play most of the minutes around, but I'll tell you what, Austin Cross gets away with one. I hope they call something on that. Just absolutely started wailing on Palumbo, right in the back of the head, right in front of the net. And I hope they at least put him in the box or something, but they're not gonna do anything. It's I'll always Palumbo. Uh, well, we did mention he was <laughs> We like know why, Jones. but it's uh, always him. I'll tell you what, Finnegan gets on the ice, we're gonna have problems. He's That's all on. I'm saying. He is on the ice. He's on the ice. He's Let's see what ice. happens. <laughs> sends in, almost gets tipped by Palumbo, trying to get that on net. Cross ends up getting that one out, stopped. Oh, Rutgers able to pick that one up, but not able to clear it is as it gets stopped right on the RMU wall. Palumbo over to Kramer. Kramer gives it to Adamski. Adamski's going to come in. Hits the brakes, looking for a pass. Gets one all the way out. That's Draper with the shot. And a save. Gets his stick knocked out of his hand. This Rutgers side is officially... Uh, I think lost their mental a bit. For Tilted, as they say in my industry. For a first game, this is not how you want it to go. And I think for the coaching staff, they're going to say that pretty pretty hard on them. They're like, hey, this is only one period. It's still four goals, and but. I'll tell you what, it's game one it's of their game season. One. Yeah. Getting this upset when you're getting beat by a team that was really good last season, kept the majority of their core this season, you had to expect that they were going to be a difficult opponent at home for the first game of their season in their building, yeah, I, you had to have expected something like this to come out, and I, I don't think the Scarlet Knight staff is going to be too thrilled with with how their team's uh, acting on the ice right now, but RMU's moving forward with the shot Ooh. goes high, unless, of course, they think that RMU's doing something wrong that we just aren't noticing. Yeah, we, um, we're not on the ice. We obviously don't know Yeah, I don't hear said. what's yeah. being said. I, I'm just we're seeing what's, what's out there. I will say RMU with a couple of, of poor plays, I would say, especially the hit in the back from Cam Smith. Yeah. You don't like to see that. Even as the casters, I try not to have a bias up here, um, and that is not something that I want to see. I'll, I'll call it as I see it, and yeah. Cam Smith shouldn't have done that at all. Not a good sign from him, but for the Rutgers team to be able to, to be this upset 
to jump players after the whistle is uh, disappointing. We just hope it doesn't continue. We don't want to see anyone hurt, obviously. I mean, I would assume yeah. that it does not carry over to period two. I assume. Well, we hope not. I mean, least. you let up four goals in one period. Tempers are going to flare. The, they are human. Yeah. No one likes to be losing, obviously, especially it's your first game, like yeah. you said. I mean, it's not like Tortorella's behind the bench telling right. them to fight people. <laughs> At least we assume not. Well. Whistle there. That's going to be touched off sides. Faceoff's going to be right in front of us yet again, right in front of the visitor's penalty box. One of the Moon Township kids, number 22 in white, Zach Love. We actually called his brother in the GOAT League during the summer, CJ. We did, we did. Tyler, former Colonial himself. Caught him behind the net. Picks up the puck, sends it back to the point, fires it in. Shot saved by Rutherford. Behind the net now. Rutgers, it's Kata. Oh, a whiff on the shot there. Not what you want to see from the Rutgers defense. That was number 58, Nick Sklierenko? I'm going to go with Sklierenko. Number 58. Do you have a better idea? Because I think it's Sklierenko. Yeah, Sklierenko. I think that's right. RMU now with the puck. Ben Webster sends this one out. Greg Kramer. Right Ooh. now has the, oh, what a hit. Benny oh, he, he's, he's in some pain. Oh, Number no. 37, Josh Solove in a little bit of pain there. Can't put any weight on the right leg. We'll keep an eye on him. We'll absolutely keep an eye on him. Hopefully he's okay. Gets stood up by Ben Webster. I don't think either player was really going for a hit. Ben yeah. Webster just kind of stood up a bit. Uh, not, not what you want to say. What a save by Rutherford. Are you kidding me, Parker? What a save. Wow. He was not in position for that shot. Hopefully his groin is still intact. That hurt me. Yeah. I mean, when you're a goalie and you're that flexible like Parker, I mean, it's really not as painful as we think it is, but what a save. Oh, he stretched. Yeah. RMU with the puck, carrying it out. Oh, big hit. A 21 broke his stick there. That is Alejandro Pood. Mexican national team player breaks his stick. He's going to go get a new one off the bench. Nice touch up. Kramer keeps that one. Sends it over to Reed. Reed sends it back behind to Kramer underneath. Somehow continues to hold that puck. Is Reed's going to send that out to Draper? Draper fires it on net. Standing up was Lakatos, who's going to make that save. 129 to go in the first period. Lakatos has been tested quite a bit in this first period. He has, and Roman's going to stay out there, but, man, he's been looking sharp as ever. He hasn't been shooting as much. He's been more of a passer, it seems like, recently. But still, the dynamic heart and soul of this team revolves around him and Justin Adamski and a few others. Rutgers dumps it in. Rutherford calls over the defenseman, number 13, Hunter Hodgson. Here we go. Sends it out to Kramer, and Kramer's coming with some speed. He has Palumbo in assistance. Sends it back door, but a nice play by the defenseman on the Rutgers side again. Scott Schnell, but out in front. Adamski had another shot. Again, Scott Schnell with another good defensive play for this Rutgers team. Kramer moves forward. Little toe drag looking for a pass. Able to get that shot on net. Lakatos is going to make the save. 50 seconds to go. But highlighting again, Scott Schnell, that's two very good defensive plays in the latter half of this period. One on the PK to stop Kramer, and he does it again to stop the pass back to Palumbo back door. So Scott Schnell laying it out on the line for the Scarlet Knights. I think one of the refs is cramping up, so we're going to get a slight break here as he was drinking some water holding his knee. We hope he's okay. I, don't, I didn't see what happened. Maybe it is just a cramp. Maybe he got hit. We're not sure, but... He seems to be okay here for the last 50 seconds. Of all the of all the people on the ice to get hurt, yeah. you don't want the zebras to get hurt. Oh no, absolutely not. The linesman he appears to be okay. Palumbo lining up for the faceoff here. Puck drops. Palumbo wins it. Adamski back to the point and the shot in on net. But Macrio Costas, Schnell carries it forward, dumps it all the way in. Schnell with another good play. Scarlet Knights have the puck. There's a chance to get it out in front, and down goes the Knights player. Oh, takes a very weird bounce. Ends up hitting Albert up high. Kramer now with the puck into the Rutgers zone. Dances around the player. That was Schnell. 
able to fire one and a good save by Lakatos. 20 seconds to go in the first period. Four to nothing still for RMU. Shots galore so far coming towards Lakatos' way. And I think they're lucky it's only four. If it wasn't for him, this score could be six, seven, eight, nothing in the first period. Alone probably just from the first line from Kramer, Adamski, and Palumbo. Oh, trying to corral that puck. That's Colin or Colin Moran. Goodness, listen to Higher me. Player. Connor Moran. Connor Moran trying to control that puck, but ends up losing it. It goes off sides, and with six seconds to go, we're gonna have to touch up as Kovac brought that in off sides. Kovac's only a junior. Yeah. I thought he was a senior. I feel like he's been here so long. I feel like he's not. been here since Luke Lynch. That's a while. That was what, three, four years ago? Yeah. Wow. Face off one by Rutgers as we tick down to the final seconds. Shot goes in on Rutherford. He pads it aside, and that's going to be the end of the first period. Your Colonials leading the Rutgers Scarlet Knights four to nothing. It's, it's been an eventful first period, to say the least. We started off with the Greg Kramer goal. Of course, his first ever goal. And then Justin Adamski, 0.100, 0.101, back-to-back -back goals. And then the sophomore Keith Reed finishes things off. Four goals, incredible start here for the Colonials. And I don't think if you're Coach Joseph, I don't, I don't think there's much to touch on except keep your head. I mean, that's about it. Oh, you do not like to see that as we are oh, watching no. number 37 for the Scarlet Knights, Josh Chalavey being helped off the ice by his teammate James yeah. Ryan, not able to put any weight on that leg. He is hobbling a bit as he gets into the tunnel. We'll, we'll keep an eye on him. We'll see if he does come back out for the second period, but I think his night may be over. Uh, I hope so. I was enjoying That's, him play. I, That's I, I, it's tough. Really tough. That's tough. You don't want to see that in your first game, in your first period. You really don't want to see that. But yeah, we, we hope all the best for him up here. Like we said, he was a guy we talked about in the intros, possibly one of the impact players, and we never like to see someone go down like that. Yeah, you want to talk about some players on the Rutgers side that played really well. Um, Got to highlight Scott Schnell. Yeah. Good defensive plays by him. Uh, I thought he played really well in that first period. Uh, Garrett Cotta, he was all up and down the ice. The speedster, the junior. Oh, I'm sorry. No, he's a freshman. He's a freshman. Yeah. 5'9", 160 out of New Jersey. Garrett Cotta looking very strong as well. And on this RMU side, you have to highlight Adamski and Kramer. Oh, yeah. I mean, they looked fantastic. We're definitely going to have to keep an eye on number 37 on the Rutgers side. We will keep you updated at home if you are a Rutgers fan. We definitely do not want to report something that isn't true. So if we see him come out, we'll say it. And if we don't see him come out, we'll also say that as well. So we are going to take a break, and we will be back at the start of the second period after the chuck -a puck for charity. Ooh, always, a, always a good start to the season. So we will see you guys in about 10 minutes. See you in a bit. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back down here at the Clearview Ice Arena. We have about two minutes to go before the start of the second period. We did get some updated facts and figures from the first period, official ACHA stats. Shots on goal, your RMU Colonials have 24 shots on the keeper. And the Rutgers Ooh. team has seven. And yeah. you know what? It was apparent that yep. the shot disparity was going to be about what it is. So 24 for the RMU side, seven for this Rutgers team. And I was talking about it in the break. A lot of Rutgers problems right now is their decision making in the offensive zone. They're taking so long with the puck. They aren't making the quick decisions. They aren't getting those open chances because they aren't registering that those chances are open quick enough to get the puck to where it needs to be. And by the time that they recognize it, the hole's closed. Yeah. It, it takes a step and it takes a tiny break to get your advantages in the sport. And so far it hasn't gone Rutgers' way, but all it takes is one. It takes one, your momentum comes back a little bit, and you can get yourself back in this game if you're Rutgers. If you're RMU, you just... You are just gonna play lockdown defense you at this point. You. you keep you, doing you. There's nothing I would change. No, the physicality is gonna ramp up, and you kind of have to expect that, I think. But other than that, I mean, just stick to your game plan. It's worked perfectly so far. I think uh, Coach Joseph, Coach Joyce, and Coach Pellegrino are all going to be very happy with the performance on all segments of the ice, on all thirds. I think they're going to be very happy with that period. Um, I do think they're going to want to clean up a bit of the extracurricular. You yeah. obviously don't want to take a penalty. You don't want to let Rutgers get back into it. Right. But um, right now, RMU's looking really, really good 
and Rutgers just slow to start. It's their first game. That was their first period. And they were facing a team that has already played two games against a very good opponent. They were warmed up. They were ready. Yep. So if you're the Rutgers side, you'd like to see some more pep because they did look a little slow compared to the RMU team, but most teams do. Uh, this RMU team's pretty quick, but Rutgers has some quick players. They just weren't able to be explosive because by the time they got the puck, there was someone in their face. Right. Also, I must say, when hearing this, you call Coach Pellegrino sounds so weird to me still after he was a goalie last year, but this is his first game behind the bench. He wasn't on the Canisius trip, but congratulations to the coach. Christian Pellegrino, your coach first Pellegrino. game behind the bench. Very nice. And he has to be thrilled yep. with Rutherford's performance so far. Uh, mainly the goaltending coach, but also does an array of different things. Oh, yeah. Has to be very happy with Rutherford's performance thus far in the first period of this game. Hopefully he can carry it forward. He had a letter last year. He was a goaltending alternate captain just like Kevin Mackey, so you, you know he's a leader in the locker room some capacity. We know he didn't play a lot of games last year as well, but... For him to be able to come back and still be able to coach this team and help this team any way he can. And it looks like Solovey's back on the ice, skating a little gingerly, but he's skating. So that's very good. Working out the wheel, the knee looks a little tight, but we'll probably see him on for a shift or two. Kind of see how the wheel's feeling, see how the joints are. But right now, uh, very happy to see him back on the ice. Definitely ginger on that right foot yeah. though. He's taking very a, little, ginger. a little extra time to feel it out. That's probably his make or break to say if he can continue in this game or not, if he can skate on that leg. He looks like he's good to go, though. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on him, see if he actually has a shift, and if he continues throughout the game. So we'll take a look at him, make sure that everything's okay. Uh, he's talking to the trainer right now, one of their coaches, um, seeing if maybe they can go into the game. We'll see if he gets off the, the bench and takes a step back. He probably won't be playing. It wouldn't be too much. I think it would be enough just to see what he can do on the ice. They'll probably give him a shift, yeah. and we'll see how the CL it is. But if if he's not feeling it or if he's a little slow, uh, they really don't want to risk that. There's a game tomorrow. Just rest. Right. Especially at this point in the game as well. I mean, the, the next 40 minutes for Rutgers is to find your identity, pretty much, and get some chemistry going, get some sort of momentum going. It's not really about getting goals. It's just about figuring out who this Rutgers team is. Yeah, and to take a quick peek again back at those shot totals, 24 to 7 in favor of RMU. So if we do the math a little bit, Parker sitting down there with a perfect 1.0 save percentage, zero goals against. Kramer walks in with a chance and a good play by Scott Schnell. Yet again, another good defensive play. But Jake Lakatos, the goaltender for Rutgers, sitting at a 0.833 save percentage and a 12.0 goals against average. So he's going to want to definitely step that up. A good period here in the second should definitely do that. As Rutgers moving forward now. Shot sticked away by number 13 for RMU. Hodgson shot in and blocked away by Loges. And now Adamski has the puck. Palumbo's with him. So is Kramer. Adamski's going to wheel up top. Oh, hits Palumbo in the back. What a save by Lakatos. Palumbo can't put it in. It was sitting right there. Lakato's able to do a little bit of acrobatics. Makes the save, freezes the puck, and we're going to have a whistle. It was right there. Gio just couldn't find the puck. And Lakato sprawling out. It was behind his glove, getting around and getting that puck. A fortunate break there for Rutgers. Lakato stretching out that left arm a little bit there. He really had to stretch for that one. Seems to be okay. Back behind the net. RMU sends it out to the high slot. Draper down into the corner. Reed was there, but not able to corral it. Draper steps up, able to keep the puck in, but Rutgers gets a favorable bounce off the forward from RMU. It bounced all the way down to the RMU zone as Draper's going to shovel that one along to Alejandro Pood, who got his first point in the first period. We didn't even notice. It was an assist on the Kramer goal. Alejandro making his name and his number known early here. Rutgers carrying it now into the RMU zone, sends it on net. Rutherford misses the stick there, but Draper is going to be able to pick this puck up and carry it for RMU. Gets it over to Reed. Reed moves in, looking, takes a shot that gets saved by Lakatos. Popped up. Block, moves in for Rutgers. Shot saved by Rutherford. And that is three or four shots for Rutgers so far in the second. They're already starting to get some more on Rutherford. 
And that's a good sign if you're the Rutgers staff. Is you're pretty much already, what, that's a little over 50% of the shots you took last period. And that's the first two minutes of this period so far. I mean, that that's a positive sign. That's something to build on if you're the Scarlet Knights. Well, I'm sure Parker wants to work, too. Oh, that, too. He loves to see shots. He's a goalie. RMU rings it off the post. Number 23, Tyler Kovac. Oh, took a weird bounce in on net. Moran almost had that one, but a good save by Lakatos as he faced some traffic down in front. But closes the door, and RMU can't get another one. 17.44 to go in the second period. One person I've been really impressed with so far is number 18, Connor Moran. I mean, he's been put on to this second, third unit, if you'd call it, and he's meshed really well, I think, with Kovac and Smith. His speed, he plays a little bit physical, and he's in front of the net. Something that you like to see out of a freshman, very confident in his game. RMU behind the net, looking to try and get it out front. And Cameron Smith, going to do a little dancing, tries to send it in, but it's going to go all the way down. And Rutgers might have a chance here as Sex chasing it in. Gets hit by Albert. Set goes down, can't get onto his skates quick enough. A big hit on the RMU player who didn't even have possession of the puck, but that was Connor Moran who goes down. No call from the ref. The parents on the sidewall by the band, by the band steps were not too thrilled with that hit. Referees, I think, are just going to let him play at this point. Oh, to be fair, the puck yep. was right next to him. It was. Moving forward now, this Rutgers side sends it up. Sec. Had Levenberg in the slot, but a good stick there, an active one by Blake Loges. Up into the netting, and we have another whistle. Something I think Loges is pretty good with is he doesn't let the middle of the ice get open very often. He's very physical, and he's good with his stick. And in that case scenario, that puck goes get sailing out because of a nice play by Blake Loges. Face off one by Byrne. Hodgson tries to get it out, but Rutgers has a chance here. A good one out in front. A dangerous play as a Rutgers player put it in on net. That was number 72, Ryan Ozemanik. A good shot, but just goes uh, just goes wide. RMU now with the puck. Greg Kramer currently has the game-winning goal. Sends it in, stopped by Lakatos. Rutgers in the corner. Carrying it out into the neutral zone. Cross tries to get that one out in front, and he does. Bobby Orr's that one to the center. <laughs> Shot gets tipped out in front. The Rutgers side definitely having more of offensive pressure here in the second period. RMU might be sitting back a little bit, but Rutgers is definitely pressing. Back behind the net, Schnell. Gets it to his defensive partner, Cross. Cross sends it up. It's going to be... Pickpocketed by Palumbo, block in, in chase here, and Palumbo gets it, dances past the check, drops it off to Adamski, tries to get it back to Palumbo, loses it, but still maintains possession. Kramer gets this one with the shot and a good save by the defenseman, but Lakatos gets bumped in the net, and there's going to be a penalty. I'm not sure if it's going to be on, it might be on Adamski for interference on Lakatos, or it could be out at the point here. Now Finnegan just took down a, a Rutgers player. Draper got taken down as well. There's about four or five different case scenarios where someone could be going to the box here. It was Gutierrez on the Rutgers side getting taken down there by Andrew Finnegan. So we're going to see. Uh, it might. I'm not actually sure what it's going to be. It, they might have just blown a whistle for the net being off because there's no one going to the box. Yeah. Or it, it might have been offside too. There were so many bodies where the puck was. I, it was hard to see. Uh, well, I think we're going to assume that it, I think the netting was off or the goalie's mask was off or something of that nature for a quick whistle. Adamski fired it off of a quick face-off draw. Lakatos didn't even move. Went up, hit the backboard. Palumbo challenging Draper. Sends it back in. Didn't get enough on it. Oh, my goodness. Draper, Tyler Draper buries the Rutgers player. And I'll tell you what, the Rutgers players are not thrilled with this one. That was, I believe, Hilliard. Thomas Hilliard for the Rutgers side was just buried by Tyler Draper on the blue line. Schnell and Gutierrez took exception with that one. Draper going to the box. That's going to be two minutes. We're going to see what the official call is on this one. Call that for wow. 
Is that boarding? I, I don't know if it was a board. No, if no, anything, no. I can see it. was interference. It was interference. Yeah, an interference. The, the puck this was. This is where Norman comes into play because yeah. he knows what the ref's doing. I just see him throwing up an X. And I'm like, okay, is someone hurt? <laughs> I, I like the trek by Draper. I just don't think the puck was there. Oh, the puck was not there. Yeah. <laughs> Sent in. Schnell gets it down to Levenberg behind the net. Behind the net, Sec. Sec with the puck, looking for a pass out to the point. Sec now still has the puck. Schnell, shot from the point, blocked by Makriokatas. Behind the net, Albert pins the player against the boards. Down he goes. Albert hits him again. It's sick. He drives him into the ice. We're used to seeing that at a 28 white. Albert's just crushing him into the wall. Behind oh. the net, the Rutgers players throw the puck loose out in front. And number nine, Max Levenberg's going to get the first goal for this Rutgers side. And you have to be stoked if you're this Rutgers team to finally get one back on the board on the power play. A lethargic power play in the first period. Able to capitalize here in the second, cutting the lead to three. Like I said in the beginning of this period, all it takes is one. And there it is. On the power play, couldn't come at a better time if Rutgers to capitalize on a penalty by Draper. And it was just a good look, and Rutherford just couldn't handle the puck. And for Rutgers, that's exactly what the doctor ordered here. And you got to think a little part of that is maybe because Albert was too busy burying the defense, or burying uh, Sec in the corner, yeah. and wasn't able to get it into his defensive position. So. I don't have the replay in front of me, so I can't see how close he was to that, but the puck went right into the low slot. Rutherford couldn't do much with that one, and it ends up going in, and Rutgers gets one on the board. Six minutes or six minutes into the second period. It feels like the six minutes has been a lot longer than all of the first period combined. <laughs> Just well, so many whistles. It's been good back and forth, yeah. which is nice. The first period was very heavy in the RMU side of things, but Rutgers appears to have Piece together, maybe just needed to settle down a bit, saying, hey, boys, that was the first period. We still have a long season ahead of us. Exactly. Just Let's one not game. get tilted now. Only one period in their first game. Reed with the puck in the corner alongside Apu. Out in front, tied up, was Garrett Walker. They're going to call it. And they're going to call it there. That's a hook. Absolutely was. Yeah. Walker couldn't do anything with the puck. Ends up drawing a penalty there. Joseph saying, very good, son. You've done well. And now this RMU team is going to try and steal that momentum straight back again. As Alex Gutierrez not very happy with himself in the box. But this Colonial power play, we know what they could do. And they're at it again here at the 1354 mark. And it's the number one unit, too. Palumbo, Reed, Draper, Adamski, and Kramer. Reed shovels it behind the net. Draper was there, a wind-up from the Rutgers player all the way down. Rutherford's going to stop it. Rutherford waiting. Nice to see uh, they actually put Solovey on the ice here. So he's Definitely. he's good enough to be on the PK. I'd say that he's okay. Kramer behind the net, looking for a pass. He has Adamski out there, gives it to him. Adamski holding, shovels it down. Reed along the netting. Or along the glass, up into the netting. 31 seconds in, and this RMU side hasn't really generated anything on this power play. Nothing crazy yet. They're going to keep that first unit out, which is um, probably the right call. Yeah, probably the right call if you're Coach Joseph. But you, you still have 90 seconds to work with, and you're just outside the zone. And they do have a good second unit. It's not like oh, this is do. the only first, like the only unit that they have. They have a second unit that's decent, so but you definitely want to keep your guys that are hot on the ice. And right now, uh, you have about 9, 10, maybe 11 points for this RMU power play line here. Yeah. Draper with the puck. Two men back for Rutgers. Let's see what Reed can do as he carries the puck in. Waiting, waiting. Back to Dra or Kramer. Kramer with the shot. Patted aside by Lakatos. Reed able to steal that one. Tied up along the wall. Hilliard. Steals that one. A nice play by Hilliard. Can't get the puck, though, and Adamski's going to spin it around, go the other direction. Sitting on the circle. Hits the brakes. Spins around. Adamski over to Palumbo. 
Palumbo sends it back. Kramer's going to pick it up down to Adamski. Adamski has it, looking for something. Out in front, Draper is battling with Schnell. Shot on net, saved by Lakatos, but it gets batted in. Garrett Walker, the freshman who took the penalty in order to go to power play time, and Garrett Walker buries it. Says, okay, I gave you the power play. Let me put one on the board for the boys. Five to one, RMU. If I'm not mistaken, that's the first goal for Garrett Walker. Another freshman. Here, this is what we talked about in the opening. Freshmen need to play big. And every freshman that we've called so far tonight, I would say looks pretty comfortable. And Garrett Walker, welcome to the score sheet. Another first goal. Nothing Lakatos could do there. Uh, he had made the first save. The second one was just an unfortunate rebound. And it was sitting right in front of him. He dives on that puck in order to get an icing as the defenseman got a little tangled up. But as of right now, a 5-1 to one score on the board. RMU gets one back if they're letting one up at the very beginning of the second period. Gets one on the power play. Three, or is that two? Two, two. for two? Two for two. Two for two, 100% so far in the power play. Love to see that RMU. And we knew coming in that this was one of their strong suits, was the power play and the penalty kill and they've exceeded expectations thus far. Yeah, they, they had really good special teams last year, and you wanted to see that continue into this year, even losing um, one of your power play quarterbacks with Braden Harbison uh, graduating. But the transition hasn't looked bad, but we've no. also only seen the first line, apart right. with Garrett Walker coming on for a sub. Yeah, and if you think of that second unit last year, they had guys like Keith Reed. Now Keith Reed gets bumped up to that top unit, and everything seems really well. That second unit, like we said, we haven't seen it yet but it's going to be freshman heavy, I believe. And to see those guys work together, I think we'll see it at one point in this game. But it, it'll be something to watch going forward. Both of their power play quarterbacks, now that I think about it, were seniors because yeah. Cotton's gone and so is Harvison. Right. Out in front, Cam Smith shoots that one wide. Garrett Walker gets an ovation from the crowd as he scores his first goal tonight. Shot high above the blocker of Rutherford. Moving forward, the Rutgers team's going to pick up this puck, tries to send it in. That's Block trying to chase that one. Rutherford's going to knock it into the corner. Block's still chasing it. RMU trying to get that one out, but a good keep by Rutgers, but unfortunately it does just trickle out after a third effort by this RMU team to get that puck out. Draper and Palumbo listed on the assist on that one as well for the goal for Walker. Cam Smith, a nice shovel to Tyler Kovac. Oh, that, oh, that puck, puck was, was not frozen. That puck was absolutely not frozen. And I'll tell you what, I don't think Connor Moran deserved that because mm -mm. that puck was not frozen. That was loose. He poked it at the right time. That puck was not fully covered by the glove. And now three Rutgers players, now two were on top of Connor Moran. I'm sorry, Cam no, that's Smith. Cam Smith. Connor Moran, I think, had the poke, but Cam Smith sticking up for his teammate. Cam Smith, uh, I'm sorry, Connor Moran had the poke took two hits yeah. and then quickly left the vicinity and Cam Smith took the rest. <laughs> took but, a page out of Geo's book. But that puck was not frozen. No, that it puck wasn't. was loose. That it was a good play by Connor Moran. You played to the yeah. whistle. The whistle had not blown. Right. The, the puck was loose that should not have been that should not have been blown for a freeze, but <laughs> RMU gets the offensive zone face off, so Maybe they can score on this one and null and void that infraction from the referees. The, they haven't sent anyone to the box. No, no, I didn't think they yeah. would. Uh, so I think it's just the. I mean, I think, yeah. I think Rutgers was. They were defensible for being in that position. Obviously, whenever your goaltender gets gets poked and then the whistle blows immediately after, you take it how it is. They aren't staring at the puck. Right. Lakatos is. So. The defenseman didn't know that the puck was loose, so naturally you defend your goaltender. That is how it works, so I don't think they would call anything on that unless it got a, out of hand. Nothing out of hand per se yet. I think both teams probably got a little bit more like, hey, let's not continue this going forward. You know the referees like to try to keep control of the game. Oh, they will start calling it. Yeah. I, I think that is probably their last warning. Oh, for sure. Reed gets the puck out, but Rutgers picks his pocket and they're going back and forth in front of the Clearview wall, right in front of that Rutgers bench, but Draper is going to get the puck in his own zone. Sends it out. Garrett Walker with the puck, drops it to Reed with the shot right in the chest of Lakatos. 
and another bit of an interaction. But I'll tell you what, the captain for Rutgers, Scott Schnell, telling his player to calm it down, which you like to see from the captain trying to calm his team down, especially after something that really wasn't much. Yeah, it was just a poo trying to get to the front of the net in case there's a rebound. The defenseman took a little bit of exception to it, but it's good on the captain. You need someone like that to keep your team in check, especially in times like this. And I'll tell you what, the coach even looked at him and said, hey, don't, don't do that. If he pushes you, don't push back because you don't want to take a penalty in this situation oh, if no. you're Rutgers down 5-1. to one. Palumbo fans on a shot in the high slot. Rutgers going to spin this one around. Chips it on in. Gutierrez with that. Draper picks up the puck. Adamski now out in front. It's loose. Dangerous play, but RMU's defense is going to keep that puck. Is it just me, or do the Rutgers jerseys look really loose? They kind of do. I've, I know that in some cases you can't have your jersey flying around, per se, and that's why people have to do the tuck, or you have to get your jersey fitted in a certain way. But it, it does kind of seem like the jerseys are almost like inline hockey jerseys. In almost. Way. Like, that's what I was thinking. They don't look terribly thick. Uh, they just look a lot more yeah. loose. I'm seeing a lot more fabric flying around than I normally would. They're very clean. I, I will say I do like these jerseys, but, yeah, they definitely do look a, a little bit loose on these They guys. remind me of the Indy Fuel. Kind of see that, yeah. From the ECHL, the Indy Fuel. It's a good color scheme, though, the Actually, red and white. It, I'm not sure if he still plays for them, but there is an old RMU D1 player who is either playing with the Fuel or has, has since left. Um, do you remember Israel? I've heard of the name before, yeah. I think his, I think his first name was Eric Israel. Yep. Uh, he was a defenseman for RMU, ended up going to the ECHL to play after he graduated in 2019. There's a couple of few uh, ECHL RMU alums floating around between Luke Lynch and uh, Jordan Timmons, a friend of the GOAT 4v4 league we got to meet. Former, like I said, former Colonial, played with the Idaho Steelheads. Brady Ferguson oh, used Brady Ferguson, to be. Yeah. He used to be with the Marlies in the AHL, and then he went to the SHL, I believe, to play in uh, overseas in the Swedish League. RMU with the puck now in the Rutgers zone. Oh, loose out in front, but it's going to be stopped by Lakatos. And I'll tell you what, Rutgers are immediately jumping, are jumping on the RMU players as they get close to Lakatos, who, for the record, has taken quite a few shots this period, and I'm sure they don't like that. But yeah. RMU's playing to the whistle. They are. You can't say that Joseph, you know, Joseph can't be mad at them for not finishing or trying to finish until the whistle gets blown. And Zach Love, Connor Moran, both freshmen, Alejandro Poot as well. That's three different freshmen that we've seen in front of the net still poking away at that puck until that whistle is being blown. These freshmen have been phenomenal tonight. Maybe that's what this team missed last year, that freshman drive, that freshman urgency of, hey, this is the start of my career. Let's make, let's make it shine because it wouldn't be that out of the question for some of these players to potentially earn a contract as one of our goaltenders from last year uh, had a contract. Unfortunately, it had to be uh, terminated due to, I'm not I'm not sure if it was closed borders. Uh, visa issues, I believe. I think it was visa yeah. issues, so yeah. Uh, that was Kevin Mackey who actually had a contract in the SHL. Um, and if they are watching, hello, they That's actually watched like. our tape last year. For yeah. That's pretty cool. I, I feel really cool knowing that uh, our tape's getting around. But for Mackey, he's back one more year, and then hopefully his back contract his issues, yeah, co contract issues get resolved, and he can get his pro career next year. Yeah, and he deserves it. He played really well he last does. season. I thought that he was going to be a top player for them, and unfortunately wasn't able to make it happen. But I'm sure that team still has him on the radar. Oh, for sure. I definitely think they'll probably say like, "Hey, just let's figure it out next year." RMU now trying to carry it forward into the Rutgers zone. Block with a nice hit. Takes down the RMU player. That was number seven, Blake Loges, who you don't often see get knocked down. Nice little spinorama by Scott Schnell. Oh, all the way out, and it's picked up by Rutgers. They have a chance here. Can Loges get there? Loges gets taken down, but a good save by Rutherford. The defenseman not able to make a defensive play, but it's okay. Rutherford was able to make the save, and we're staying with a 5-1 to one game. Hodgson just couldn't handle the puck, but nice play by Lowe just getting on his horse. He had his guy taken care of. Told Rutherford, hey, I got this guy. You take the shot. And Rutherford was able to make the save as Lowe just dove out just in case he tried to get that one across. Sack along the boards. It's Rutgers team grinding along the wall with the RMU squad. 
RMU looking like they're going to come away with this one, and they do. Tyler Kovac has Connor Moran with him, but Kovac gets his pocket picked. A hit into the boards by Cam Smith, who just honestly threw his body with no real power behind it. But Rutgers carrying it forward. Nice little move. Can't get the pass off, though. RMU's going to get one deep for Keith Reed, but Reed unable to corral that one. Lakatos comes out of his net, makes the play. Rucker's going to try and turn it the other way. Turns it over to Albert, and Reed's going to fire it in behind the net. Connor Moran trying to get the puck. Against the wall, Rutgers looks like they have it here, and it looks like, oh, they do, but a player goes down. Incidental trip not being called. Good break there for the Colonials, I think. That could have been called. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, the Rutgers player essentially walked in, but a nice play by Gutierrez and Hilliard the other way. Hilliard dances and a save by Rutherford. Uh, what a play by Gutierrez to smack that forward on a long lob pass, able to hit Hilliard in stride. It was a good play. I think it may be a questionable on the high stick call, hitting it out of the air, but regardless, what a beautiful play. As there's a Rutgers player who's a little shaken to get up behind the net. RMU, cross comes in with the shot. Blocked by number 27, Garrett Walker, the freshman. Lakato stops that one. Being chased was Alejandro Apud. Apud now. Buried into the walls, four men. Looking for this puck, Adamski down there as well. Apud has it. Down behind the net, pass out. Oh, it was a nice play to Garrett Walker, who didn't see it coming. Hit his stick. All the way out, Kramer steals that one over to Palumbo. Palumbo can't get past the defenseman. And it's going to go all the way down to the RMU zone. Waved off, Draper picks it up, smacks it behind to Finnegan. Finnegan tries to lob it up. A nice play by Sec to keep that in. Palumbo going to steal it off of the center. And Adamski now over to Draper. Four on two, Draper into the zone. Down low, Palumbo's going to get it off the Eaton Park wall. Adamski tries to tuck it in back door, takes a couple of pokes. And again, Rutgers upset that RMU is playing to the whistle, taking the pokes. But I'll tell you what, if, I, if, I'm, a, if I'm a defenseman, I'm doing the same thing that the Rutgers players yeah. are doing. That's a little captain on captain action there. Adamski was trying to poke it home. And I believe Scott Schnell was, the, or I'm sorry, Austin Cross was just defending his net as he's getting escorted to the bench. Cross over to the bench, Draper as well. Five on five action. Five to one, 527 to go, a lot of fives. 527, five one. Draper, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not Draper, that's Loges. Loges sends it in, Kramer trying to get that puck and it's gonna be picked up by Hodgson who gets it over to Palumbo, trying to get it to Kramer. Unfortunately not gonna happen. But a nice play by Sec gets buried by Hodgson. That's what you like to see out of a freshman defenseman, play in the body, but wisely. Unfortunately, then loses his stick. Got to keep a hold on that. Break. Sec sends it behind. And here comes Palumbo. He has Adamski. Adamski has some speed. Can he make it three? Shot saved by Lakatos with the glove. A quick flash of the glove by Lakatos. Five to one still, Adamski looking for his third of the night. Mikados just read it perfectly. Adamski just trying to cut towards the middle as much as he could. He had his Scarlet Knight draped all over him. But Lakados has been very solid this period for a little bit of a shaky first. But 4.49 here to go. And now th this fourth unit, Robert Byrne, a name we haven't called a lot, but one of, one of the unsung heroes, I believe, of this team. As he's a sophomore, also played a little bit of junior hockey before this as well, Robert Byrne. As that puck is picked up by the Scarlet Knights. Pressure away by Zach Love. Austin Albert trying to lay the body. Behind the Knight, the Knights working back the point. Schnell shot, bouncing puck, picked up by Austin Albert. Moving forward now, RMU into the Rutgers zone. Evades a hit, number 26, Greg Kramer. Back behind the net, block, able to shove that one forward off of his chest. Webster tries to get that pass over to number 22, Zach Love. 
RMU now trying to get the puck here as both teams can't really maintain possession. They're just kind of going back and forth a little bit. I think for RMU that's not a bad thing. I mean, no one's getting in the zone either way, but you're also killing the clock as you're winding down here in the second period. And we're also getting a break of, from the copious amount of whistles. Yes, a lot of whistles this period. Probably double the amount of time from the first period it almost seems like. Kramer behind the net to Webster. Webster shovels it out. Now RMU's going to try and get into the offensive zone, and it looks like they're going to turn the puck over yet again before crossing that blue line. Rutgers now. It's cross. Austin Cross fires it on net and a save by Rutherford. Gets knocked aside. There's Soliev out on the ice again, 37 in red. Shot in on Rutherford. He's going to make the save. I don't think that was actually going to be on net. I think that was a little wide. I don't think it was a bad idea from Parker just, just to get that puck down, cover it up as a couple bodies come off for the Colonials, just to get, just to get some fresh troops out there. Uh, we did get a smidge of an update on Josh Solove, the number 37 for the Rutgers side. Um, we talked to the managers who are sitting next to us, and they said, well, he's on the ice, so, <laughs> so there's that much. Uh, apparently it was a let's see how you feel, and we'll go, we'll go with it that way. But he's on the bench right now, and it looks like he's actually stepping off of the main play bench. Uh, might be done for the day. He's smacking the helmet of some of his players, and he says, sorry, boys, I think I might be done for right now. So we'll see if he comes out for the third period in his game gear. But it does look like he took a step backwards off the bench. So we'll keep an eye on that as the shot goes in. Lakatos makes the save. Oh, no. That was scary, but player goes down for RMU and then gets jumped on by the Rutgers player. They're throwing hands. They're throwing hands. The Zebra's got to get in there. The helmet is ripped off of the RMU player, number 23, Tyler Kovac. Not a good look for the RMU side or the Rutgers side. Throwing hands there, I'm not too sure what happened. All so, of a sudden, we see, we just see Kovac on the ground. What, what I saw here, CJ, is Kovac went into the net. Kovac was blowing for the loose puck. The whistle blows, and the Rutgers player tackles Tyler Kovac down onto the ice. At that point, Kovac was defenseless, and he... I believe number, I think it was Hillard, just started pounding on him, and the referees didn't see it. Kovac was defenseless in a defensive position, trying to cover his head. And at that point, Kovac said, that's enough, and they went at it. But the player from Rutgers was on top, and now it looks like Connor Moran is going to the penalty box. It's probably, there's probably coincidental, but four minutes for yeah. one. But like I said, it... It looked like Kovac was defenseless. He was thrown to the ice. He couldn't get his hands up or anything, and the player was just beating down on him. And then ripped his helmet and off. And then ripped his helmet off. You saw the helmet going flying across the ice toward the Eaton Park logo, and that is just not a good look right now for Rutgers or Army because you do not want to see a fight. You do not want to see someone get hurt over a whistle that was blown at the last second when a player was just trying to dig for a loose puck. I imagine we're going to see a two-minute power play for RMU. But we are also going to see both players in the box. I'm assuming um, it's offsetting roughing calls I, and then probably an unsportsmanlike conduct for Hilliard. You have to think. I mean, I don't know how the referees didn't step in A sooner. I don't think they saw it. I don't think they did either because they you had they Moran. They were skating away. Right. You had Moran. You had the netminder Lakatos coming out of the net. You had call, or Connor Moran with another player tangled up over here and then Cam Smith with another guy over in the left corner. And then there was Kovac down on the ice with Hillard. And you didn't have the third referee down there. You had right. three scuffles going on, and arguably the worst one was let go. This. So as the referees get this sorted out, we do only see two minutes on the board for the away side. So, so I'm assuming I'm assuming yeah. it's offsetting roughness calls. Or I'm sorry, it's offsetting um, roughings. Roughings. And we'll hear it now. So two minute minor for, for holding and then offsetting Moran. roughing calls. Oh, no, so they Moran? got Moran for slashing. That's so going to offset with the two minute call for roughing. Oh, yeah. And then they're going to get Hilliard for, for holding. And we're just going to have a two minute power play for yeah. RMU. So they're going to call the holding for him holding down Kovac? I, I, I'm not sure. I, we'll have to see if this is five on four. We do see four Rutgers players. I don't. I didn't know if they were maybe going to do um, another man down, one man for each side, yeah. but that's that's a tough scene. I don't, I mean, going back and forth, I would have expected unsportsmanlike conduct in some capacity. I, I feel like you would because of the point when another player's helmet comes off and being thrown across the ice and him punching on top, <laughs> I, I don't know. It, it It's not curling. 
he, he threw the helmet into the Eaton Park wall. Yeah. And, and there's we go, a second, oh, there's a second player, player Rutgers yep. player going to the box. Unless that's still Hilliard. No, that's a second player. That is a second player. So we do have another Rutgers player in the box. Kramer now with the puck, hoping to go three, uh, three for three. A shot that goes high into the netting. Lakatos was on his stomach. Unable to make that save as he took the initial one, but the bounce went all the way over and the shot went high into the netting. RMU looking to go three for three and continue their perfect power play for, for this evening as there's there are two Rutgers players in the box. There's a unit to do it. We know it's this one right here. It's the same five guys that were on for the last two. Kramer to Adamski. Adamski winds up the shot saved high by Lakatos. Back behind the net, it's Keith Reed. Reed out to the point with a shot from Adamski. It's blocked by the Rutgers defenseman. A good keep by Kramer. Reed with the puck, shovels it far side, picked up by Palumbo. Palumbo's gonna wheel, sends it down to Kramer. Kramer's looking for a pass, far side. Adamski with a shot, and he gets his hat trick! That's three for Adamski, 100, 101, and now 102. Justin Adamski makes it six to one. Another power play goal for this RMU team. I, we saw a hat actually go flying to the right of us, CJ. But Justin Adamski, have yourself a night. 100, 101, 102. My goodness. A fantastic performance by the senior captain from Gibsonia. A fantastic night for him and a night to remember. And it looks like they're going to give his hat back. How nice. That was very nice. I think this is a message to all the uh, Division One players here. If you want a hat trick, you might as well come on my podcast before your Friday games. That's going to have to. That's how it's going to be. That's how it goes. So. We said Nate Mickey in two weeks. You know what's coming after that, Nate Mickey. And Kevin Mackey as well. Mickey so we'll and see. Mackey. Mickey and Mackey show. You should do both and call it the Eminem podcast. Oh, we are. They're going together. <laughs> it's it's going to be it awesome. It has to be Eminem. The Eminems. McCrory, Mackey, and Mickey. All in one room, the MMMs. I forgot you started with an M, yeah, too. That's three. Well, we might as well call M it M squared. <laughs> or, I'm sorry. No, that's cubed. M cubed. <laughs> Listen, it's been a while since I was in school, all right? <laughs> it's, it's been my first two math. years. I've only taken one math class in three years. Moving on in, Justin Adamski getting an ovation from the crowd for his hat trick goal. On the night of his 100th point, he gets 101 and then 102. A great start to the season for this lad as Rutherford takes a shot up high. It hits the glass, stays in. Rutgers with the puck. Sends it out to the point. Looking for the shot. Kind of shovels that one in. Dangerous play. The puck is still loose. Plays around. Caught it with the shot, and he scores. What a shot from the top of the circle. Gets over the, it was either directly over or just under the blocker of Rutherford. Gets it in the top left corner. What a play by Kata, a guy that we mentioned at the end of the first period, gets one here in garbage time at the end of the second, makes it 6-2. to two. I think Palatenic might have got a tip on that one. He was the one that kind of was celebrating off to the side here. And if it was, what a deflection by Palatenic. Daniel Palatenic, the sophomore out of Brooklyn. We'll have to see, but that was a beauty of a shot from the top of the circle. That was a heat-seeking missile. I don't, there's nothing you could have done with Parker Rutherford. If that was deflected, that was just a beautiful tip. Albert. Shovels that one in. Schnell back for Rutgers. Well, that kills the momentum of the hat trick for Adamski with a goal coming not too long after. Can Rutgers make it another one, a third? As Macario Kass is getting held on the other side of the net. His stick was being held there. Yeah. Behind the net, Rutgers looking for a pass out to Schnell, the captain. Schnell fires it on net. It's blocked Rutgers down by Reed, picked up. Reed moving forward. Kata gets credit for the goal. Reed out front, and a shot saved by Lakatos. And I'll tell you what, immediate fisticuffs oh, with Garrett goodness. Walker and a absolutely drilled in the back. Macri Akatas, like you mentioned before, having a tough few minutes. Picked up by this RMU side. Alejandro Apud takes it in the corner, and I'll tell you what, like throws, throws a little bit at the end of sec. And a chippy period. Ends with some more chippiness. Apud, he kind of got hit a little bit in the back there, and he took exception to that immediately. He knew where the whistle was, but you got to be careful. You do not want to start this next period on a penalty kill. Yeah, definitely do not, especially in your first game for this team. Yeah. You do not want to take a penalty, especially one after the whistle 
at the very end of play, you do not want to see that happen. But That's exactly what Joseph, I think, is telling his team right now while Rutgers makes their way off the ice. Oh, for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, Lakatos, a bounce back period. A bounce back period, let in two goals. Let in two goals, but he was very solid for the majority of that game. He was. He was making the saves for he had for to make. For that yes. period. He was making the saves that he had to make. There was nothing, per se, soft. Everything that went in off of Lakatos was a good play. Lakatos did not have any softies. Everything he did was phenomenal, I believe. That was a much better period, and that's what you need to, if you're the Rucker squad, you need to lean on him. He is keeping you alive in this game right now. And they you got to like Austin Cross as well as the backup goaltender, number 32, Michael Labuti, went over to the goaltender, uh, Lakatos, and was saying, hey, you know, that was a great period. You guys, you did well that period. Talking to him, patting him on the back, saying you're doing the best that you can. He is taking his time to get off the ice. We'll see, uh, we'll see what happens in the start of the third period. He's definitely taking his time. I'm not too sure if he's just waiting for the RMU players to get off the ice here. It's Snell and both Snell and the other captain here, Cross are also kind of, well, not Cross making way, but Snell and Coach Joseph are having conversation with the referees. Yeah, and if I know anything about Joseph, he's a very political man down there behind the bench. He, he has his way with referees, but he definitely likes talking about every single call. He has a little bit of Mike Sullivan in him. I can see that for sure. Likes to talk about every single call and will let you know his opinion if he does not like your call. I'm interested to see what Lakatos is doing here. I'm not too sure what's going on. This but is. he's sitting, he's he's on a knee. I'm not too sure. Uh, you have to think he's waiting for Schnell. It, does he have like a superstition he has to be the last off Your the ice? Or? It's possible. Um, but we're going to have to, I mean, we'll keep an eye on it. We'll yeah. let you guys know when we come back. I'm not sure. If in the third, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on. But uh, it looks like they're finally going to leave the ice being... Yeah, uh, Schnell. It's a superstition. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He was waiting for Schnell, and now Lakatos is going to exit the ice. And now all of the players have gotten off, so we can officially recap. I think that period, there wasn't there wasn't a ton to talk about apart from a definite return to back and forth action. Yeah. Rutgers really turned it up a notch going into this period, and I think they had to. Because if they didn't. They might as well just got back on the bus while it was still warm. If they weren't going to come out in the second period with a little bit more heat, I'm not sure if they were going to be able to do anything to bounce back against this uh, RMU team who started a little slow in the second, but it might have been because they were caught off guard by how quickly Rutgers actually came out and really started to press the RMU side. you got to give credit where credit's due, and Rutgers put two on the board and a solid period from their goaltender. I don't think there's much more you can ask for from the Rutgers coaching staff, really. Two very good plays on yeah. Rutherford as well. Uh, Again, what we had mentioned going into the second period is that they had to be more decisive in front of the net and in the offensive zone. They were just too slow with the puck. And it capitalized there because they were able to get the puck out in front into the low slot in front of Rutherford where he couldn't really do anything. And they were able to bury their first goal, making it 5-1. to one. And then RMU turns around, makes it 6-1 to one a little bit later, a couple of minutes later. And they turn back around with another good goal, a cannon from the top of the circle making it six to two. So RMU going into the intermission again with a four goal lead, they have to feel comfortable, but at the same time, they let in two goals. That's not yeah. what you want to see. You don't want to see it. And I think from, you know, going into the first intermission, probably coach has not a lot to say. Now there's stuff to say. Oh yeah, the, the first period was pretty flawless, all yeah. things considered. Clean up some of the extracurricular stuff, which, which wasn't cleaned up. It got right. exacerbated, if anything. Right. And then, that was really all you had to do. Just keep up the good work, keep up the hard work, keep grinding, keep checking, and keep moving. Now, there might be a little bit to talk about. Now we're talking about maybe we need some more net front presence out of our defensemen. Maybe we need to stop worrying about finishing checks down in the corner yeah, when the puck's on the other side of the net. Nah, there's some things to definitely talk about, but we'll leave it to Coach Joseph for that. Exactly. That's why he gets paid the big bucks to do this. Yeah, I mean, someone has to. Right. All right, everyone, that is what we're going to end on for our second intermission. We will be back to start the third intermission in about eight minutes. We'll see you in a bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back here at the Clearview Ice Arena for the third period of Rutgers Scarlet Knights versus your Robert Morris University Colonials. 
Uh, I'll tell you what, we got updated stats in terms of the shots, and Rutgers, who looked much better this period, only had one more shot than they did in the first period. They had wow. eight, eight shots to RMU's 15. The current total now sits 39 to 15 total. So RMU, almost 40 shots through two periods of play. It's got that short, short, shoot first mentality, it kind of seems like. But on the Rutgers side, you say only eight shots, but two of those shots went in. I think that's a pretty good shooting percentage if you really think about it here. Their quality chances, what we got. Yeah, they're Rutgers. doing much better. If you look at the save percentage difference, it is much better in Lakato's favor. And I was just about to start calculating that. Um, but I did, I did run out of time, so <laughs> you didn't have quite as long as intermission. No, used to no, it, it, we had we had too long to cut to the intermission. And yeah, that was the problem. So, so 13 saves on 15 shots for Rutherford. So, not a great look, not a great look at all. I'd say that's probably right around 800, which isn't yeah. what you'd like to see. That is where uh, Lakatos was at the end of the first period. He was sitting at 8:33, and now his. His stats have gone significantly up. And Way I, up. I, I, I will calculate it whenever this, this period starts, whenever we have a little bit of a break. But um, going into the third period, if I'm RMU, I need to get back to what I was doing in the first period. Yeah. I need to keep track of my emotions. But don't take away from the physicality and the pace of the game. Yeah. Because you don't want to say, okay, well, boys, let, let's be a little bit more passive. And then all of a sudden you're getting walked in exactly. your own zone and then you're hemmed in for 20 minutes and Rutherford's dog tired and lets in three goals. It's one of those things you got to find the fine balance between it. I mean, you have guys like Gio, and you've seen it from the freshman like Garrett and Connor Moran, where you're still, you still have to get in front of that. You still have to make those kind of plays. But when those kind of physicality plays happen, you just need to have the cooler head but still play smart. You still want to be in front of that net. You still want to keep the, the engines going. But just do not take a dumb penalty. Yeah, this is the time when you need that Brandon Tana mentality. Exactly. When you need that, let's work, let's get in the corners, let's not give up, let, let's go through, let's follow through with the plays, but also let's take some penalties, not give some. Exactly. Because Rutgers has to come out with some heat. They have to. They have to come out strong. They have to get a goal within the first three or four minutes or else it's really – it's going to be tough for them to score more than four goals in the final 15 minutes of this period. I think they need to get one early, and if they do, then the ball starts rolling for them and RMU sits back on their heels a bit. Four goals is doable. That's what RMU put up in the first period. It's not impossible if you're Rutgers. And I think that's what kind of the message from Coach Dixon from the Scarlet Knights probably told his team is, we can do this. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. In the first period, it was 4 nothing. Exactly. In the second period, it was 2-2. Two -two. At this pace, we could have a tie game at the end of this third period. Right. So it's really going to depend on what this Scarlet Knights team does. If they come out with heat, if they come out with passion, and they have a solid goaltender in net for this period, then this could go either way. They've really warmed up. They've looked a lot better since that first period ended, which was a bad showing. In the second period, it looked a lot cleaner. The shots, you would have liked to be better. Yeah. But it felt like they had more chances. It did. It, I mean, like you said, even though it was eight shots, you had two go in. But those six other chances, they weren't just They dump weren't bad. They weren't dump-ins on Parker. They were actual passes, actual shots. Just Rutherford was able to make the save. But, hey, one or two of those bounces go over the way. That's 50% of your shots that have went in and be goals. They just need one in exactly. the first just three one. or four minutes. And then I think we have ourselves a hockey game. But if it's still a four-goal deficit by the time we hit halftime here, that's going to be tough. It is. I mean, if it was one or two goals, that's obviously doable. It's a lot, you know, you can play your game a little bit, kind of work your way in. But as soon as you kind of hit that mark of like five minutes or so, you got to turn it up a bit. But four goals is a lot, but it's doable. And I think that's just one goal at a time. RMU loses the initial faceoff, but gains, main, uh, gains possession, fires it in. Lakatos is going to stop that puck, get a freeze. So 12, 13 seconds in, we continue the mentality of whistle, 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 whistle. I would, I'm not opposed to that if you're RMU. Because now you get to set up in your offensive zone. And the right-handed shot, Gio Palumbo tries to take that draw. Down behind the net, a shot goes high into the netting. Adamski with a nice feed from Kramer. Adamski just puts it high, maybe off the shoulder pad, and then into the netting. Give it to the hot hand, right? Adamski got three already. I mean, I'd trust him to shoot that puck as well. 
a .867 for Rutherford in that period, or overall in the game at the end of the second period, 13 saves on 15 shots. Not, not terrible. Not terrible, but not great. Right. And I will be calculating Lakatos' save percentage, and that was a close one there. Gets redirected out in front. Lakatos couldn't corral that one, but it goes all the way down, and we're going to have a third whistle, and we're not even a minute in. It's not a surprise, and it seems like some butting of the heads as the referees kind of stand towards the bench, but let's go back to the opportunity from Gio Palombo in front. He got tight enough the stick on it. It just bounced right over the goal, but a good look from the defensing pair of Hodgson and Draper, or Logis, out there, and it was an A-plus opportunity, just just a tad bit over the net from Gio, but in his office, he likes to be in front of that net, and he almost took advantage of it. Lakato sitting in an 846 after two periods of play, has faced a couple of shots already. I'm sure they are now up over 40 in terms of shots against. As Kramer sent it down underneath, Adamski shot trickled out in front of the high slot, but Rutgers going to clear this one out. RMU starting with some pace. A bad play there by Kramer, who turns the puck over. But down underneath, Moran almost gets that to go in, but Lakatos watches that one the whole way in, makes the save. Kramer picks off that pass. Adamski in the high slot, takes his time, fires it high. It's still loose. Lakatos makes a good save, but the puck drops straight down. Still dangerous, but Rutgers now has the puck going the other way. Polotnik with the shot, saved by Rutherford. Into the boards, the RMU player, but we still maintain possession of the puck. Moving forward, that was Garrett Walker, the freshman. It's been a minute. We haven't had a whistle yet. No. it's Honestly, we should do another chuck-a-puck. <laughs> Polotnik moves forward. Shot goes in, gloved by Rutherford. And you, you've done it. You've done the caster curse, didn't you? Yeah. 8.20 yeah. to go here in the third period. 6-2. to two. You know, I, I never really thought about the Kastikers being real until I started doing this last year. Oh. And the first game I did, it was it was me and Norm. And the first period I did it right away, and I'm like, this is actually a thing, and I need to stop doing this. And I kind of forget about it sometimes. Norman does it all the time. He does. <laughs> Between the two of us, we, we definitely jinxed him a little bit. But we ended up winning that game, so in the end, it was all good. Nice chip by Apud there, able to swing at that puck, actually got it towards Lakato, so it was a bit of a knuckle puck. And a good glove there, the hand-eye of Lakatos coming in handy as a pood looking for his first goal of the season. Nice. And one in an RMU color. Well, he's moved up to that second unit now with the read in Garrett Walker. Well, nice. Walker's looked great, too. He has. So I think this line has the potential to mainly be that depth line that they were they kind of need to back the first unit of Kramer, Palombo, and Adamski while Mickey's out of the lineup. Yeah, and I think that's going to be where he can shine, and that's where he has to take control of this opportunity, seize that brass ring, as they say. A nice play by Finnegan to keep it in, but unfortunately it was rolled off sides. So Rutgers has it now in behind the net. Draper was there, but Rutherford smacks it with the paddle. Finnegan now along the wall, tried to get it to Walker who's eventually going to grab it and dump it into the zone, chasing it. The Rutgers player, number 77 for them, Rich Kalazowicki. Which I butchered, by the way. It's a fun name. Rich Kulaz Kulazowicki. No, no, no. Yeah, Kulazowski, I believe is what it is. But, uh, That's a fun name. I, I, I read it really quick, and for some reason I kept thinking of Rick Kowicki. <laughs> I couldn't get it out of my head. I, I, that's a very fun name. I'll give him credit. Junior defenseman at Howell, New Jersey. A lot of New Jersey natives on here, but um, well, not a surprise. Yeah, just directors. like there's a lot of PA natives on our squad here. Good to see also hometown talent kind of staying on both sides of the ice here between New Jersey and Pennsylvania natives. Albert gets a little bit of a shovel on that one. Connor Moran, who I feel like we've said his name thousands of times tonight, chasing Chanel, who has the puck, whose name we've also said a thousand times. Maintains possession, but. Got a little bit too aggressive with that stride and loses the puck as it was poked away by Ben Webster. A nice play by Cam Smith to dance around the defenseman. Moran fires it back on net with a weird angle. Albert's going to spin around. Doesn't have the speed to match. It was Manic who sends it over to Gutierrez. The shot ended up going wide, and RMU's going to try and get this back off sides, and now they do. So Rutgers taps up. Sent out, Albert throws it to Moran, who chops it in. 
And they are going to call something here. I think it was an icing. Not entirely sure, but I was also looking through the roster. We said a lot of New Jersey. There's a couple PA, a couple Massachusetts. How about Fredericton, New Brunswick for Ben Jennings, the defense and sophomore for Rutgers? From New Brunswick. New Brunswick. A little bit of a journey from New Brunswick, Canada, but he talked about players from all over the map. Alejandro Pud from Mexico City, Mexico, and he had Ben Jennings from Fredericton, New Brunswick. I mean, players from all over. I do think the farthest one is absolutely Mexico City, Mexico. Yeah, that is quite remarkable for the journey he has been from Mexico City through Western America to Canada and now here to Moon Township, Pennsylvania. Schnell with the shot that gets blocked by Connor Moran. Rutgers sends it back to the point. A little bit of offensive presence not often seen in this game for Rutgers. Webster steals that puck. Cam Smith loses that one to Schnell. Schnell stands up on Cam Smith. Neither player giving an inch. All the way out, Rutgers, that's block. Gets pickpocketed by his own player, Hilliard, his own teammate. Back behind the net, that might have been a little too far, but Kata now has it for Rutgers. Jennings in the wall with Kata. Oh, that was a weird play on in, and Block actually got a tip out front. Block with the shot, and a good save by Rutherford. That's the big save that I think Parker Rutherford was looking for. Beautiful shot there and a good pad to knock it away. Ben Webster got smashed up against the net. The net almost came off its moorings. But Rutherford able to adjust that before the next play came in. Robert Burns sends it up. Zach Love evades a check, maintains possession. Zach Love behind the net. Shot saved by the goaltender. The shot had come in by Greg Kramer looking for his second of the night. But what a great play by Zach Love to maintain possession, evade a check, and get a pass out in front. It was good work by him, and he, he tried to get it over. Greg Kramer is there as well. You talk about two freshmen that are playing very well. I think you look at those two. Greg Kramer already got a goal, and Zach Love has kind of been all over the ice as well. I mean, I've been really impressed with all of these freshmen thus far tonight. Rutgers loses the puck along their wall. Palumbo sends it back in, looking for Kramer, who isn't able to beat the Rutgers player to the puck. However, back in their own zone, Hunter Hodgson finds Palumbo, who loses an edge, but is able to shovel that one along to Adamski. Adamski's able to get that back to Hodgson. Hodgson carrying it in. Trying to get that behind the net, playing physical. Maintaining possession is Rutgers, but they turn it over. Adamski fires it towards the net, goes wide. Picked up by Loges, sends it back underneath to Kramer. What a pass to Palumbo to Adamski. Oh, can't finish. And it was a good stick there by the defenseman. I think that might have been Solive uh, with, the, with the stick there. And good to see him back on the ice as well. And a good play by, get this name, Andre Amesqueta on the Rutgers side of things. Number 14 with a shovel gets it all the way out. Moving forward, Loges dumps it behind to Hodgson, who wasn't quite ready for it, and it ends up going all the way through for Reed, who sends it back towards Lodges, but Gutierrez is going to beat him to it. Palumbo with a hit. Rutgers trying to corral the puck out in front. Dangerous play. The Scarlet Knights still have possession. They have Schnell at the point. They have some help, but Gutierrez is going to keep it, fires it, and it's blocked by Palumbo. Needed to find a pass. It's loose out in front. It's still loose out in front. Hodgson. Hits the PNC wall, it's gonna go all the way out. Waved off, and RMU's gonna get a much needed change. A nice play by Keith Reed. The four check of Keith Reed, and it might pay off. RMU fires it in on net, and it's still loose. Keith Reed goes for it. Number 27, Garrett Walker, the freshman, with another good opportunity. Schnell picks up this puck. Drops it off to his teammate. Fired in by Nick Sklierenko. RMU looking for a pass. Saw Walker moving, but not able to get it to him. That was Zach Love. Sends it in behind the net. Behind the net, Schnell. Oh, gets absolutely hit by Garrett Walker. Love to see that of the freshman physicality, a big part of this game, and Garrett Walker's been providing all of it all night. Nice little poke check there by our buddy George in four. Schnell. 
Sends it over to Osmaniac. Picked up, Garrett Walker, who's been on the ice forever. And that might be delay. I think it hit the glass. Yeah, it hit the glass. Yeah, it hit the glass. Lucky break there for Draper, I think, as he was just trying to skim it across the top of the board to get to Garrett Walker, who's going to be staying out on the ice. That He's been out there for quite a while. Yeah, he's oh, he's immediately going towards the bench, but it was actually just a nice break of speed. Army's going to try and get this out. Draper gives the Rutgers man yeah, a shove. There, there he goes on the bench now. Rutherford stops the puck. Trying to move it forward, Connor Moran turns it over to Austin Cross, who fires it on net. In the five hole, Rutherford didn't know if he had it or not. Able to corral it, gets the whistle. 12 minutes to go, and no goals yet for either side. Uh, and that was a good play there by Andrew Finnegan, four and white. One of the other freshmen we've talked about. He has the size at 6'2". On skates, definitely looks about 6'3", 6'4". And I don't think he's a guy you want to be messing with. Is there's a little bit of a poke. Finnegan took a little bit of exception. Nothing crazy, though, but that's... That's a good job there by Finnegan. Albert sends it behind. Trying to pick up the puck was RMU, but Rutgers doing a very good job in their offensive zone. The defenseman steps up, a nice play, loose out in front. Kata was there. RMU spinning around looking for it. Connor Moran with a nice play out to Cam Smith. There is a whistle. I believe number 77 was getting a bit aggressive there. Rich. Kulazuski going to the box. But uh, you know what? He was very, very hyped up when he was on the blue line trying to get that puck in. And I think his emotions just took over. And this could be devastating for this Rutgers side if RMU can capitalize on yet another power play. Huge opportunity to just put the nail in the coffin right now. We're almost at the halfway mark. By the time this penalty is done, we will be at the halfway mark. Past it even. Yeah. And that's... Ideal for the Colonials, just get one more. And after that, you can play conservative all you want, but I think just one goal. Ideally, you get this goal with 159 gone on the penalty clock. Yeah. Kramer with the puck down underneath. Reed to Adamski. Adamski trying to corral that. He's actually able to get that, which is very nice on him. Palumbo sends it down, almost turns it over, but Kramer's going to get it. Kramer to Adamski. Adamski winds up, shot, hits the post. Palumbo with the puck. Kramer sends it in. Adamski loses that one. Kramer has it. And now there's some speed. It's Kata. Kata comes in with the shot, and it's actually knocked aside. And he gets a little bit of a shove there by Rutherford at the end. But now they have Keith Reed coming the other direction. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Has plenty of options. Takes his time. Finds Kramer, the last man in. Not able to corral that. Sends it down underneath. And... Schnell almost loses that one. It goes all the way back down. And 60 seconds just about gone here in this power play. Kramer moves forward. Dancing around some players. Has Draper towards the middle. Rutgers down on top of the puck here. The puck gets knocked aside. And we're going to see a little bit of a hand pass. Which, to be fair, is a fair call. As yeah. Austin Cross is going to get that hand passing call. Uh, he was essentially laying on the puck, and then all of a sudden it came out with some speed going the other direction. Little Danny Briere action, if you will. <laughs> well, we're going to see the second unit out here for the first time. Garrett Walker, Connor Moran, Cam Smith, Hunter Hoggison, and Blake Logis. Two freshmen. Three freshmen. Moran, Walker, and Hodgson, then two vets, and Logis and um, Cam Smith. I keep thinking of Hayden Hodgson, the Flyers for I, I also thought of that former Erie Otters legend. Played there for about Erie one year. Erie Otters legend. Erie Otters legend, Hunter, er, uh, Hayden Hodgson. Moving forward now. Sent underneath the shot. Goes behind. Moving now, Hodgson underneath. Picked up by Walker, who tries to get it back out to Hodgson. It's intercepted. And a nice little kick by Hilliard. Loges sends it back. Moran to Loges. Loges moves forward, 10 seconds to go on the clock. Sent all the way in, Walker picks it up. Looking for a play here, the final seconds of this power play end as Rutgers is coming the other direction. Hodgson and Loges back, the shot blocked by Hodgson, a good play, selfless. Fired nice forward, play. here comes Moran, there's a two on two the other direction. Over to Smith, Smith with the shot blocked by number 10 McGinnis for Rutgers, a nice play there as well. Chanel loses the puck. 
Two RMU players run into each other as Cam Smith loses control of that one and Rutgers comes the other direction. Puck's just kind of bouncing all over the place right now after this power play expired. Hodgson's looking fantastic, making good plays with the puck, and I'll tell you what, I see a little bit of Braden Harbison in him. I can kind of see that. He's got that style of play. He does. I think RMU might have found another puck-moving defenseman that they can use for the next four years maybe in five. that top four, maybe five. Yeah. Never know. I, I will say I do miss Mr. Harbison. I know, I do miss Mr. He usually would stand beside us as Rutherford swallows that one up here. But, yeah, another Mr. Harbison, shot. we definitely miss you. We miss Braden as well. That <laughs> shot was from, again, probably my favorite name on Rutgers, Andre Amazaqueta. That's a... That's a tongue pull right there. I think, well, I think it's, the reason why I'm saying Quaita is because I think it sounds like Aspilicueta, the Chelsea fullback in the Premier League. Uh, it's spelled similar, so I think it's Quaita. It sounds cleaner that way. Well, it's better than Quitta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we're wrong, we and apologize. And if it's Quitta, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just kind of <laughs> buried your last name, didn't I? If it sounds cooler. Shot goes in. Rutgers looking for a deflection there. Kolazuski just taking shots from the point, but I'll tell you what, they they aren't that great, and he's he's dealing with a lot of emotion right now. He, he just took a penalty, he just got back on on the ice, and now he's taking shots that, while they're good chances from the point when you're taking those low shots, getting upset because it gets deflected, there's six guys in front of you. Exactly, I mean, as a defenseman, you kind of have to know where your shot's going, and you only take the shots that you really have to. But Listen, I mean, we're, we're not all yeah. Kale McCarr, okay? No. But, I mean, you have three of your own guys and then three of the opposing team's guys standing in front of the net. I mean, Things chances are happen. something, it's going to hit somebody. Sometimes the puck has eyes, and those are the really nice goals, but not every time. Loose out in front. Four Colonials swarm on the puck. Kulazuski takes another chance, and it's blocked yet again. Adamski chips it up. He has Palumbo deep. Oh, and he's buried. What a hit by Gio Palumbo. Kyle McGinnis gets dropped by Gio Palumbo, who didn't even see him coming. The bench gave him the warning, behind you, behind you, but it was just too late as Palumbo had him lined up in a beautiful finish from 16 and white. Kulazuski sends it to McGinnis, back to Kulazuski. Out to Scarietta. Moves it in, and uh, I don't know about that, that one, close. but Garrett Walker uh, gets called for that one. Well. When they're close like that, it's up to the ref's discretion. Yep. I don't like reviews whenever they do offsides like that in the NHL where you have to review that. If it's that close, it's not affecting the play. I don't Just think. let it go. Keith Reed wins the faceoff for RMU. Draper <laughs> ends up shooting it directly at Apud. It was a good keep there by Apud, though. Hit off his stick. He was like, oh, all right, I have the puck back and just threw it in. A good play there from Alejandro. Pood hits the brakes, picks up the puck. He's being held, and no call there. Uh, Austin Cross was holding the arm there a bit. Gutierrez tries to pass it over to Ozemaniak. As Garrett Walker got checked, and there's going to be a penalty. Down underneath, RMU loses that puck. The shot comes in after the whistle and a bit of a slash by Draper, oh no. who's then dropped. He's sending him too. Yeah, I mean, that was bad. I think Draper's going. Oh, they're sending both. I think they're sending three. I think Draper, I think the original call, I think they got Draper for a slash. Uh, they absolutely should have. They got him, yep. They absolutely should have got him for a slash. So this will be four on three, I think. You didn't have to do that. And as an assistant captain, you shouldn't be doing that. Or is it four on three or four on four? Is where What's unfortunate is those penalties might now offset. Yeah, that is. I think with Draper, I don't think he knew there was a penalty. And when he saw the extra stick come in, he thought to just, you know, take his man away, take the stick away. And overall, I think just, I think it means a little bit more communication to say, like, hey, there's a delayed penalty. Do not do anything. So they are still giving RMU the power play. Um, I, I, I mean, what Draper did was just foolish. Yeah, I, It's just a, a, a lapse in judgment. Uh, can't have that happen. I understand that it was a late shot on Rutherford. I get that. But you don't do that whenever it's a delayed power play. You know, when it's a delayed penalty, you, you don't do that because you need to keep it. So we have two Rutgers players in the box. 
So I bet 72's in the box because he hit Draper after the play. I, th I th knew that one, yes, but there is a penalty before that Garrett Walker did not have the puck, and I believe it was 72, threw a cross check right into the nameplate almost, and I think that was the original call. Well, James Ryan's in the box alongside number 72. Uh, it was a maniac. So I'm not sure we'll, we'll uh, wait who did him. what, yeah. but... Uh, we aren't kept in the loop on those calls. Set underneath, RMU sends it out for Kramer in the shot. Save, but they have no idea where this puck is. So they got the cross check on the uh, on the Walker play, and then the I'll wait for him to repeat again. But he got the cross check on Walker. And I think a roughing on Draper, and then the slash on Draper. Okay. So two for roughing there. Okay, so that makes sense then. Yeah, so. So the two minutes are offsetting. Draper gets the slash and then the roughing call on number 72 and 15's in the box for the cross check. See, just someone serving the other penalty is pretty much it. Sent forward, it's Kata. He has some speed. Can he get a good chance here? Goes to tuck it five hole and he makes the save, Rutherford. Looking solid in this third period, not letting Rutgers claw back into it. Adamski coming the other direction. Dangerous man, but I'll tell you what, Polotnik said, no, 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 you're not getting a fourth. Sent all the way down, stopped by Rutherford. Kramer is back with Reed. Kramer's going to pick this one up. Kramer's going to take a look, sends it over to Palumbo. Palumbo carries this one, tries to chip it in past Jennings. Able to do so, maintains possession. Now it's Cam Smith in for Draper, who's in the box. Kramer at the point to Reed. Reed with the shot that is blocked by Schnell. Adamski drops it to Reed. Reed tries to get underneath. Schnell loses his footing. Puck is still in the corner. Reed now tries to send it back to Adamski. The puck is still loose. Jennings gets a crack at it. Palumbo sends it back in, out in front. Oh, it hit Cam Smith's skate. But a nice keep by Roman Kramer, but Palumbo can't keep it in. And it's going to go all the way down to Rutherford, and we're down to our final 10 seconds. A nice shovel by Rutherford. Shades of Marc-Andre Fleury. Roman Kramer sends it back in with five seconds to go on this power play. Still underneath, and that's going to be a killed penalty for Rutgers, who have looked much better on the penalty kill so far in this period as they've killed two. RMU is now two for four on the power play and Rutgers is coming the other way, two on one, and they're calling him for offsides as Sec was about a stride off. Rutgers bench is furious with that call. Now Draper is also set free from the box. But yeah, like you said, back-to-back -back kills for Rutgers is huge. I know it's the little things and the score says six to two, but if you're Rutgers and this is your first game, it's the little things that matter going forward. And getting two big kills like that, I think is huge going into the game tomorrow. Kulazewski sends it in. Rutherford stops it. Picked up by Webster. Webster underneath. Moran takes a hit, but he got rid of it first. However, it was turned over as Loges is going to go in for sec. Loges tries to get it through. Turns it over right in front of the net. Dangerous play. Kulazewski at the point. Fires it in. Stopped. But Rutgers maintains possession. That gets knocked right up and over the net. Rutgers behind the net, picked up by Webster, who's pinned by Sec. Out to the point, picked up by Austin Cross, looking for the shot, sends it in, it's blocked by Loges, who can't get enough on it. Rutgers steps out of the zone. Levenberg had that one, dumps it in, picked up by Ben Webster. A nice tap forward, but Rutgers has it caught up with a shot up high. Hilliard with a shot back on Rutherford. Underneath, picked up by Byrne, whose name we haven't said much today. It's not, but I think he's one of those underlying players that is really key for them going forward. He's one of the veterans now on this team. Zebra's in the way. Hodgson couldn't get around him. Play along the wall here. Sent all the way down. Rutherford's going to stop it. Hodgson picks this puck up. Tries to get around the defense or the pressing offensive player and. Can't do so. Hilliard picks that up, sends it back behind. Schnell's over there. Past three minutes has been all Rutgers. Garrett Walker with a huge hit along the Colonial bench. Block pins it against the wall. Rutgers sends it back up. Cross tries to send that back in, but Reed's going to get it. Oh, he gets hit 
at the very end, but gets the puck out to Walker. And now here comes Hodgson, the defenseman, moving on his own. Doing well, maintaining possession of the puck. This, this kid has some puck moving abilities. Oh, what a nice play by number 27, Garrett Walker, who's been all over the ice tonight. Look at that, Hodgson's right back on defense too. I'm loving what I'm seeing out of the freshman defender tonight. Kata whiffs on a check, ties up number two. Macri Akatas, who's just being messed with essentially behind the net by Kata. And referees aren't saying anything, and they're still going back and forth. Block with the puck now. Macri Akatas is keeping Kata's number in the back of his head, I'm sure, with two minutes to go here in the third period. Kramer walks in, tries to send it down to Adamski. It's still loose, dances around them, but what a play by the goaltender. Lakatos. Adamski got into it behind the plays. There is some sticks flying behind the net with, uh, I believe, not sure the number, but fans were looking for a call, but in dying minutes here of the game, nothing. Oh, puck's loose out in front. And Rutherford's going to get the cover. No extracurricular on the RMU side of things. I think One minute good. 39. You oh, uh, yeah, with, with a little bit of time that's left. Yeah, I mean, this game is essentially, I'm not going to say it because Caster's curse, we right. were just talking about it. However, it's looking a bit out of reach for Rutgers at this point. Essentially with 99 seconds here to go. Lining up for the faceoff. Polotnik for Rutgers. Gutierrez back to Kulazeski. Into the wall. Picked up by his maniac. Fires it towards the net. Kulazuski goes in, and the puck goes all the way down. Picked up by Kyle McGinnis. McGinnis now behind his own net. Passes it back to number 17, Daniel Polotnik. Out to the point, Gutierrez loses possession of that puck. Cam Smith passes it back behind to Palumbo, who dances around a defenseman, drops it off for Kramer. The dancing continues, looking for a pass out front. Found Cam Smith, but not able to capitalize down underneath. There's still a chance, because Lakatos can't get his glove on it. As that's a oh. Cam Smith gets smashed. That was right in the numbers. I, I think that should have been a cross check. Oh, I didn't see the stick come up, but. That's a dirty now play Now there's there. definitely a hit dead center. And number 72 is Maniac, who was just in the box for a roughing call. Might be going straight on back. That was the same person that got uh, Cam Smith, too. So if it was a cross check against Palombo, and they're setting Palombo, too. Palumbo's going. I'm not too sure what happened there. Um, a slash? Perhaps. It might have been some back and forth. Yeah. It doesn't look like there's going to be any penalties assessed just offsetting. Yeah, I think so. Just five on. Oh, maybe it is four. I don't know. It's going to be four on four, I think. Yeah, it'll be four on four. What a way to end. Wow. I'll take that. I'll We're take used some to this. This is, what we, this is what we saw all summer, CJ. And it was a long summer. <laughs> it's a fun summer. I mean, we had, we had the Goat League at least to keep us fresh for the meantime. Oh, it was nice seeing another ice. It was. I didn't like our setup that much, but it worked. It's the best we could do with what we had available to us. Hodgson trying to get up after being hit, moving in. Alejandro Apud gets taken down. He's just being wrestled with by Scarietta, and no one... There's, oh, and now he's going in with the cross check. And Scarietta selling it. That was a huge sub. Referee's good call not doing anything there. But if anything, Apudo's was getting wrestled to the ground. Oh, yeah, he was being held, and Scarietta's now throwing his weight around because he's upset because his team's losing. And it's the end of the game now, and that's going to be it, 6-2. to two. And I'll tell you what, tomorrow's game's going to be interesting. There's going to be some turmoil. As you saw, Hunter Hodgson also at the end of that play right there. Bunch of cross check and Hoggison said, well, get into the game, I'm not doing anything. And that was a wise move on the freshman's behalf. You usually think with some of these guys, the motions get the better of them. But Hunter Hoggison right there, composure. And that's what I think Coach Joseph likes to see out of his players. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that was a great game overall. I thought the teams, both of them played well. Definitely a good game thus far. Uh, that was actually Norman's brother, Ryan, who just walked past us. I think they have a D3 game later they might. Maybe tonight? tomorrow. Uh, not, not tonight. Not tonight. And next, I think next week. Is it next week? Next I don't week. know when the season starts. Yeah, next starts. week. Oh, next Norm Sr. is going to be furious with me. 
Oh, no. Yeah, next week's the first home game, so nothing on the D3 schedule quite yet, but here, 6-2 victory for RMU on their welcoming back to home ice for them. Nice to see the full handshake line. Sometimes you don't see this after a particularly scrappy game. We have seen some teams just straight leave the ice. Yes. But nice to see a little bit of sportsmanship at the end, and I'll tell you what, um, Rutgers, very, uh, very good game from them, at least after the first period. Honestly, if you take that first period and throw it in the garbage, it's a 2-2 game. Exactly. Nothing happened in that third period that really struck me as, as one team trying to take advantage, but I do think RMU tried to play a little bit more of a defensive game there at the very end. And then tomorrow as well, of course, we have the 2 o'clock game for uh, RMU and Rutgers. Also, 10 a.m., women's rugby for RMU. There's two matches going on, I believe, so we'll have that before we come back here to the arena for some what should be a very fun game against Rutgers once again. Another home opener win, and I'm just saying, RMU has only lost, now the game's over. Yes. RMU has now only the game's lost over. two times while I've been broadcasting the games. I'd say that's a pretty good record. I, I do get emails regularly from Coach Joseph. He wants me to go to away games. He says, just please, and uh, I can't do that. I wish we could. That would be so much yeah, fun. That would be a ton of fun. I'd love to. And I'll tell you what, if we do end up um, making it to the ACHA championship and then eventually um, – oh, no. If we make it through to the CHMA championship and then to the ACHA championship, um, I do think that we'll be in attendance one way or another because that is a fantastic, a fantastic event and a huge accomplishment for this team. Um, as we can see, the banners on the wall, but yeah. they're looking at us now. They're not looking at the at the banners on the wall. Right. But, uh, but they definitely want to hang up some more. There's room. There's a ton of room. And uh, we have still another full over wall over there. I mean, if there's a team to do it, I think this could be it. There's a yeah. lot of guys who are seniors or graduate seniors, and I feel like this, this squad, they, they have the ability, and they've kind of showed it tonight, but they just need to play, play their game. Like they did in the first period, they play that way the rest of the season. They're almost unstoppable. My concern coming into this game was defense. Yes. And the offense was never an issue. The offense was never an issue. They scored 10 goals in their first two games, but they let up eight. Right. So the concern, on my end at least, coming into this game without having seen them play, was was it just Mackie having a bad game, or was it the defense just being new? Right. Because it very well could have been either. Uh, and I think tonight it showed that the defense is pretty solid. Um, I think Mackie's going to give it a go tomorrow night. Sounds or, like, I'm yeah. sorry, tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Yes. So uh, we'll see how he is. But uh, I think, are you on the call tomorrow? I will be. Okay, so I won't be. It'll be you and somebody else. I assume Alex. We, we'll figure that out Maybe tomorrow. Alex. Maybe Alex. Alex, are you doing color tomorrow? Possibly. He has no idea. Game time he, decision, he's right? He's the director and he has no idea. That's the setup we have here at Robert Morris University. The best, the best of the best, all right? <laughs> The best of the best. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's enough. We, we've buried too many people tonight. Um, home opener for the Colonials D1 hockey team. A good ending, 6-2 to two after a chippy game. Uh, they'll be back tomorrow at 2 o'clock. There is the rugby game as well. Uh, so tune in tomorrow. Make sure you follow the channel. Definitely get those updates as we go live. But uh, I thought it was a good night. I thought it was a good stream. Yeah. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good rest of your night. Have a good weekend, and we'll see you tomorrow at 2 o'clock. See you guys.